On the studio, that was just this morning, Studio 1A. We're going to share that conversation with you. And later, we've queued up a fun 90s throwback with Kathy Bates to celebrate her birthday today. All that is coming up at first, today's Pop Start Headlines. Chris Martin is first up on Popstar today. From the world's biggest stages to a tiny barroom stage, the Coldplay frontman is proving that he can do it all. He recently surprised a lucky couple when he was visiting the Stag Inn. We'll give him the credit. It's a bar over in the UK. After a quick chat with them about their wedding, Chris just decided to give him a little private performance. Take a look. <laughs> What's your name again? Hannah. Hannah. And? Jeremy. Jeremy. You'll get your married in a minute. In, no, 28th of August. Oh, yeah, but he's doing yeah. the food. Yeah. And that's, yeah. Al that's Alfie's, pi <laughs> Alfie's piano. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're a sky, oh, you're a sky. Walking by the bar, like, yeah, the guy th thinks he's Chris Martin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on in there? Yeah. Of course, if like any good bar, what do you do? You tweet that video out. Oh, yeah. Now people stop in there hoping to see yeah. this moment. Uh, Chris visiting them. But what a, they wrote, he's a lovely guy. He ordered a Guinness. Of course, oh. there you go. He's, Please. he's a perfect man. All right, next up, Hocus Pocus 2. Did Kevin Ford and Chris Martin, like the same people. <laughs> Disney just dropped the first teaser trailer for the highly anticipated sequel. It's been almost three decades since the Halloween cult classic debuted, and all three of the original Sanderson sisters. Sisters have returned for the next chapter. It's Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Kathy uh, to Jimmy. They are back to terrorize Salem, get their revenge, and maybe put on one more memorable concert. Maiden Mother and Crone 2. We call on thee with one request. Help our intentions manifest. Lock up your children! The Sanderson sisters. I bet you're looking for the stage. Always. <laughs> I don't know if I ever saw the first one, but that reminded me of Light as a Feather, Stiff as a Board. Oh, yeah. Light as a Feather. So scary. That? My mom said never play that at yeah. a sleepover. But you did, didn't she? What is Maybe this? once or twice. You don't know Light as a Feather, Stiff as a Board? No. You ever oh. had a sleepover? It was like the trying sleepover. Trying to levitate a friend of yes. yours. Yeah. Really? Yeah, using oh. yeah. powers. That focus, and the Ouija focus board. Focus, too. Another oh, thing, scary. never do the Ouija board. That's right. Until Mattel came out with a game of it, I think. Uh, September 30th, uh, Disney Plus, you can see Hocus Pocus 2. Bruce Willis is up next. The actor headed to the big screen in a new action flick called The Wrong Place. Back in March, Willis announcing his plans to step away from acting after being diagnosed with aphasia, a condition that affects a person's ability to communicate. In his latest role, he plays the guy that we love, a former cop on a mission to rescue his daughter. Here's a peek. Call your dad. I'm just at the cabin, and I wanted to make sure that you're still coming. Why do you need to get to my dad? Fix what's broke. What? You made a crucial mistake. I'm going to do what I do best. Nothing personal, pal. He's just in the wrong place at the wrong time. See, and I'm going to watch that movie. That's yeah, yeah, of course. Wrong Goddess. Play. That's going to be in theaters on demand also on July 15th. Next up, America's Got Talent in a preview for tonight's audition round. 23-year-old opera singer Marissa Beddoes wowed the judges with her ability to hit high notes. Not only that, but also impressed, doing some impressions of some pretty famous voices. So what she did is she gave Heidi Klum like a die and had different names of singers on and asked her to wow. call for various impressions while she was singing Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Wow. wow. Stevie Nicks. Someday I'll wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are flung behind me. Celine Dion. Where troubles met, all <laughs> the Way above the chimney tops, that's where. Over the rainbow. Why then a why can't I? Oh, that's perfect. Oh, this is funny, dude. Okay, that's oh. pretty good. Okay. I thought there's no golden, like golden buzzer. buzzer? Yeah, right. golden buzzer. Come on, we're going to find out what happens tonight. Watch NBC and you can see how it all went. And here's a few more headlines for you, including the movie Barbie that everybody cannot wait to see. We got a little sneak peek for you of the cast. 
I mean, look at some of these names. Margot Robbie, Ryan Gosling, Kate McKinnon, and Will Ferrell. Some new photos from the set revealing a first look at the superstars and their characters. They snapped them yesterday in Los Angeles. Robbie and Gosling rocking some very bright colors as their characters, Barbie and Ken. In head-to-toe neon, the actors were caught skating along Venice Beach and having a good laugh. Wearing a more muted shade of Barbie pink was actor Will Ferrell, who donned some skates of his own. And according to The Hollywood Reporter, Will is set to play the CEO of a toy company in the movie. But we're going to have to wait a little while for this one to see it. Barbie slated to be released next summer. And finally, Taylor Lautner. We've seen him land crazy stunts on the big screen in movies like Twilight and Grown Ups 2. Well, it turns out that Taylor doesn't need a stunt double. In a new video, the actor's showing off some serious action moves straight from a wedding reception on the dance floor. Check that out. guys are into it, man. That's a heck of a wedding. Talk about a dynamic duo. Well, unfortunately for Taylor Lautner, that suit wasn't made for extreme dancing at weddings, and he did rip his pants. Everybody had a good laugh at it, but it looked like it was worth it. And there you have it, your Pop Star Plus headlines still to come. That's why I don't go to weddings anymore. Brett Gelman's going to speak to us about working with Winona Ryder and, of course, all the young stars of Stranger Things. Uvalde, Texas, a small town that has become yet another landmark. How long do you think it took for all this damage to occur? you tell us what, what it was like? With our NBC News exclusive. Defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who's yeah, this? These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. And welcome back with the final episodes of the hit show Stranger Things, set to be released on Friday. We thought we'd catch up with one of the show's stars, Brett Gelman, returns as Murray and spoke to us about working with the cast on this, the final chapter. I think Murray has very much evolved this season. He found his people more. He's a less... Slightly less isolated, slightly less uh, jaded person than he was in season three because he sort of learned what it meant to have friends. So you see that development a little bit, but he's still, you know, he's still a bit of a, a grouch and a, a grump. Yeah, a misanthrope, as they say. We love a good critic who calls things out how they are, you know, calls it like it is. So, and I, I think that that's very much a lot of what Murray's role is in this show. It's time. It is the darkest season. And, I mean, it, the approach to Murray, I mean, you know, as I as I play him, you know, I get to know him more and more. So it goes deeper and deeper. But I mean, things are always bad. My favorite part about playing Murray is that I get to be sort of the like urban character <laughs> amongst all these rural characters, and then he sort of brings like uh, a city vibe to it. Yet the Moja Delisi. Hi. 
Hi, Jim. That I get to be one of the, you know, a character of like somewhat comedic relief in this action thriller horror series, which is a kind of character that I grew up wanting to play, you know, and just, uh, I mean, getting to be in these like amazing action sequences and the intensity of it, you know, while still getting to really like delve into who he really is and, and the humor of it is just uh, the best, you know, I mean, getting to be in the Duffer Brothers world that they created as this character. What? Do me a favor and move your lover's quarrel elsewhere, okay? Oh, oh, oh. No, 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 this, no, no. not a that lover's quarrel, no. pal. Spare me! What is your problem? Please, stop talking! No! I can't tell you much about what Murray and Joyce are up to in it, um, but uh, working with Nit Winona is like, you know, it's a childhood dream. Uh, she's one of the greatest actresses and movie stars of all time and uh, it, I it's it's amazing to me that I can call Winona Ryder a friend of mine you know that's just uh, it's one of those just bizarre things of like pinching myself that this is my life and she we have a lot of fun we have a lot of fun when we work together she is like one of the kindest people and so funny and so getting to be you know, working with her uh, on this like almost every day that I, I worked on this show was uh, was just like an amazing treat. <sighs> Scoops Troop, this is hmm, Bald Eagle. I've reached another junction. This is what? The fourth junction. All right, so if memory serves, this is right after the My Little Pony thesis. We went left, so he has to go right. right. Fly right, Bald Eagle. Fly right. Roger that. Fly right. No. Seeing the teens' growth uh, has been amazing. I mean, they're really, like, just a great bunch of people. Really just so incredibly talented and nice and professional and fun to be around. So to see that uh, they haven't become, like, disaster people... <laughs> It's nice to see that that has not happened and that they've all stayed grounded. It's amazing. I'm really grateful that the Duffer Brothers uh, wrote <laughs> wrote me more stuff in the show, and that they that they made Murray's characters, you know, Murray's involvement in the show grow. And it's just, it's been, it's insane. It's it, you forget it because when you're working on the show, it just feels like family, you know that we're just all, you know, cast and crew. It's like we're here to do a job and get it done and have a good time together. When you step away and you are reminded just how massive the show is. I am the most excited for people to see me, uh, you know, just do amazing acting in this season. It's just, it's really remarkable and I think that uh, people will really, really enjoy my performance in a way that they haven't ever before. Uh, so that's very exciting to me. I'm no, I'm I'm really excited to. I, I just really this season. I think it's the best season, and, and I think the other three seasons have been amazing. But I think the it, it, this is everything like the up to the millionth degree. It is scarier, more action packed, and funnier. Than, than previous seasons, and there is such an amazing balance of all of that, that, uh, I mean, it's just like, it's really, it's really awesome. Thanks to Brett for hanging out with us, and again, volume two of Stranger Things, season four drops on Friday. All right, coming up, Steve Carell, AKA Gru himself, fills us in on the latest word from the world of Minions. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Uvalde, Texas, a small town that has become yet another landmark. How long do you think it took for all this damage to occur? you tell us what, what it was like? Now 
Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. And welcome back to Pop Star Plus. Steve Carell's back as the voice of the villainous Gru in the new Minions movie, The Rise of Gru, and he stopped by Studio 1A to tell us all about it. Well, we are back, and check it out. Our plaza has been taken over. We've been minionized, and we love it. But what are they without the big boss himself, Gru? And we are joined now by Steve Carell, who returns as the supervillain in Minions, The Rise of Gru. But this time, Gru is 11 and 3 quarters years old and just meeting our yellow friends for the very first time. Take a look. When you guys tracked me down and responded to my help wanted ad, I was like, who are these tiny tater tots? And where did they get so much denim? Steve Carell, good morning. Good morning. We meet again. I know. Can you believe that this has had such staying power? It started with Despicable One, then two, then the Minions movie. This is, I think, the, is this the fifth in the franchise? Yes. Would you have ever thought this would be the one? Not until I saw the first one. Yeah. Honestly, because it takes like a year and a half, two years to do the voice and, you know, all the animation. They animate to the voice. And, and I thought, it's a good script. It's really fun. I love the people involved. But then when you see the final product and what the animators and directors, producers yeah. do to it, uh, incredible. When they first were like, we're going to have these little yellow guys that wear denim overalls. They have like, some of them have one eye. They speak a language no one can understand, but everybody kind of understands. Were you like, oh, that's going to be a hit? Exactly. Yeah, I was like, well, good luck. Good luck with those, <laughs> those minions. That's, that's an ace idea. And uh, yeah, they're geniuses. It, is it the minions that is the secret to the success? Or Let's be honest. Is it Gru? It's Gru. Yes. <laughs> it's mostly Gru, I think. No. The Minions, the Minions, and they've been described as Twinkies or Tater Tots, yes. Little Pills, you know. They, they're, it's sort of incomprehensible to me that it became what it became. But people love them, and they're, I think it's because they're equal parts um, obnoxious and uh, endearing. They are, and mischievous. Yeah. I mean, I, I love them. I, that's the funny thing about it. It's like grown-ups like these movies, too. You were telling me even your kids, who are now young adults, wanted to come to the premiere. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they were so excited. And my son, after the premiere, pulled me aside and said, Dad, seriously, you know, all kidding aside about this, you know, in a kid's movie, he's like, it was really good. <laughs> like, and I, I love it, because he's an aspiring film student. He's like, I love the shots. I love the composition. You know, the, all of the editing, the timing, like he really was into the movie as a movie. It was fun to see. The first one came out when he was like four or five. Oh. And now he's 18. And so he has an appreciation in a different way. That, that's high praise, especially from a, a teenager. Yeah. Like just to say anything nice about anything a parent is involved in. Yeah. Like good good on you. So let's talk. This is Gru's origin story. Yeah. I love that it takes place in the 70s because that's just a magical template for them to work on. The sure. outfits, the cost, the music, all of it yeah oh yeah the music I mean it, it's all it's it's all a big part of what the, the nostalgia of it I think is what's going to appeal to the adults there's there is one joke in it about the length of time it takes to dial a rotary phone yes. that's maybe one of my favorite parts of the movie. It, it's incredible um, Gru is 11 and three quarters years old which made me think about you in the 70s at 11 and three quarters years old yeah what kind of kid were you well I was really cool oh really yeah. You're like not, no nerdy no, anything. No, 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 no. I had it all dialed in. You were, were you a bully kind of too? No. Just kidding. 
<laughs> no, I had like I wore I had long hair. Yeah. And I had we called them flares. Oh, like bell bottoms. They were kinda, bell bottoms. Yeah. yeah. I had like purple striped ones. <laughs> um, so I was kind of rocking the look. Were Remember you, fry we, boots? Yeah, I, I used do. To wear fry boots. Oh yeah. And were you like a ladies' man? Did the they, other oh yeah fifth graders just like you? Clearly. <laughs> And still am. Yeah, I know. Oh, I know. Mm -hmm. um, other than you've been married for like 50 years. <laughs> yeah, How many years have exactly you been right. married? We've been married 50 years. Yeah, I know, which is odd because you're uh, 60. 27. I know. Oh, 27 years. I know. Your beautiful <laughs> wife, your kids. I was thinking about, though, like you really got big. You were in your late 30s, almost 40. And I was just thinking about that's a long time to be trying to make it big, to yeah. be a journeyman in this business. Well, I wasn't really trying to make it big. I just want, a journeyman was great for me. Yeah. I was I was happy making a living. That was that was the aspiration, just to make a living at acting. And the, the rest of it was just sort of, uh, sort of gravy, really. What's the best job you ever had? We just had Kevin Ford on. He didn't miss a shift in 27 years, which is so sweet. What's of all your jobs that you've had? The, well, the worst one pops to mind. Oh, I worked in the produce department of a supermarket. Oh. And I had to wrap fruit in cellophane. Oh. I don't know why they did it at that point. To keep it fresh, I guess. <laughs> it was um, the 70s. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You were 11 and three quarters. Yeah. It was, it was, that was a tricky time. Yeah. And the boxes get all soggy there it's in the produce disgusting. department. I know. And I was terrible at it. At one point, I was stocking popcorn on the shelves and I accidentally poked a hole in the bag. So I took a, a, one of the labelers to put the price tags on and I sealed up the oh. hole with like 18 prices. And then my manager said, what's this? And he peeled it off and popcorn over the floor. Clean up aisle five. Yep. <laughs> That's exactly right. Thank you so much. It's good to see you. The movie is a delight. And Thanks. it's because of you, Gru. It's your origin story. It's all about Gru. You're just saying that. No, I'm not. I love you, Gru. And I love the Minions. It's from our parent company, NBC Universal and Illumination. But we'd be saying this no matter what, because it's a fabulous movie and the kids will love it. Thank you. Thanks. A day made better by the great Steve Carell and having the Minions here. So much fun. Be sure and check out Minions, The Rise of Gru. From our parent company, NBC Universal and Elimination, that hits theaters on Friday. Coming up, a 90s throwback with Oscar winner honoring her birthday, the great Kathy Bates. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Hamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Welcome back. The talented Kathy Bates, who turns 73 years young today, has played so many terrific roles in her career. And in her honor, we're taking a look back here to 1998 when she spoke with us about her characters in Titanic and Primary Colors. So this has been a great time for you, it's hasn't it? It's been a great year. Well, first really of all, yeah. we should probably Well, this is Griffin. Griffin. This is Griffin. I brought him with me. I, He's he's my sweetheart. He's my boy. So yeah, thanks you for rescued, me bring him you rescued show. him a yeah, couple years ago. A couple right? years ago, oh, we he's, rescued he's very him. He's fascinated by our interview. You're not allowed to yawn, Griffin. So, and I brought I brought him to the to New York for the first time. He's he's more of an, an L.A. dog, so he's still getting used to the trucks and the traffic and the people and everything. And so. you get to follow him around with a plastic bag. That's right. <laughs> with a little pink experience. plastic bag on your hand. Oh boy. All right. Well, let's get back to the movies, <laughs> shall we? Yeah. Um, tell me about how excited you were with the Titanic's incredible 
sweep of the Oscars. It's amazing, isn't it? I mean, so many people worked on the film. It was just an amazing experience. I think the the most incredible experience was working in the dining room, you know, going and being in that scene there and, and sitting down at your place and you'd see a plate that was an exact replica of what they brought up from the debris field and the silver had all the white star insignias stamped right. on it. it Even was just the cards amazing. that had the menus. Amazing. I mean, it was just all so meticulously done, wasn't yeah. it? Was, did that make it eerie in a way? It was eerie. You know, Ken Marshall, who did the illustrated history of the Titanic, came and he just, he was there the day we shot the dining room scene. And he just stood there with his mouth open and he said, "This looks, it'll never be done like this again. He, it was as though he stepped into one of his own paintings. Yeah. Were you surprised that that... Titanic did so well at the Oscars? No, I, I think everybody expected it. You know, it's just, it's, you, you, you go and meet kids who've seen it like eight, 10, 11 times. And I get, I get so many young kids, you know, coming up to me for autographs, but I realize it's not for me. It's because I was on the boat with Leo. <laughs> I mean, let's face it, you know, what their is, eyes just glaze that over. That is so amazing. I guess he's this generation's Davy Jones or whatever, <laughs> whoever was my David Cassidy, I'm not sure. But it's crazy, isn't yeah, it? it? Isn't is. it a bit insane? It is insane. He's such a talented, talented. I, I fell in love with him when he did uh, Gilbert What's eating, Gray. What's eating Gilbert? Was he not magnificent Phenomenal. in that role? And I thought, wow, this I did guy too. is so gifted. He's amazing. He's amazing. He's a real phenom. He's a chameleon. Yeah. You know, and lovely to work with. Really sweet, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. Um, before we talk about primary colors, <laughs> yes. which I think is one of the main reasons we're here, I have to ask you about Molly Brown. How did it happen? You play, of course, the unsinkable Molly Brown in mm -hmm. Titanic. How did it happen, uh, Kathy, that she just just happened to have a, a, a dinner suit that, that fit <laughs> Jack perfectly? You know, that required a little more suspension of disbelief than I was capable of. I know, it's true. <laughs> well, we figured out that maybe, you know, she was shopping in Europe and... And it was for her, for her son. son, right? She was bringing it back. I was for her like, son, sure. You know, like, Why didn't you well. say change that? Huh? Did you think well, that was a know. little far fetched? <laughs> it was a little far fetched, but you know, it's the movies. So. Yeah, you're right. You're, I guess I shouldn't take it so seriously. Well, let's talk about primary colors because I I confess to you during the commercial that I haven't seen it yet. I'm really looking forward to seeing it. But from what I hear, you steal the show. Well, it's a great part. It's a plum part. I play Libby Holden, who's one of his uh, political operatives. And from the moment I read it, I, I just, I knew it was a, a terrific part. It's Why? The best, it's the best part I think I've had to come down the pike in a long time. Better than Misery? or Well, it's as good as, yeah. I think, What certainly. makes it so good? Well, because you get to do the whole thing. You, it's, it's the whole arc. She's crazy. She's funny. She's you know, but she's also she's profound outrageous, and isn't she's she? outrageous, but she's also got a lot of uh, depth and, and she's, uh, she, you got the pathos as well as the comedy, you know, and it's, 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 it's everything. It's the whole ball of wax. And, and to work with somebody like Mike Nichols, who, you know, is great taste and smart and Elaine he is Mace, so smart, oh, huh? he's just amazing. And not to mention John Travolta, John Travolta. Emma Thompson, who I adore. Yeah, she's Talk great. about smart. I, I mean, know. She's so supportive, too. We had our first rehearsal. We were sitting next to each other, and there's like a big, long aria at the end that Libby has. And after I did it, she kind of reached over and grabbed my hand and was real supportive and friendly. And it's just great working with everybody. I think the film also has some more profound things to say about the political process. It's not just about a Clinton-esque family. I think mm -hmm. it has to do with how we do elect our leaders and, and how we feel about that whole electoral process and what someone has to give up in order to become elected. Right, you know? which is certainly very much in the public discourse these yeah, days. Yeah, it is. Well, Kathy Bates, I'm really happy for all your success. Congratulations Thanks. on everything. Thanks, Katie. Great to see you. He's Griffin gone for was his nap. <laughs> by everything we had to say. Anyway, good to see you. Thank you. Very cool. And of course, we are wishing a very happy birthday to Kathy Bates. And there you have today's Pop Star Plus, everybody. Thanks for being here. Hope to see you again tomorrow. Until then, make it a great one today, all day. See you soon, folks.
everyone, I'm Chassie Post, and today we're kicking off a brand new shopping experience, our new program, Shop All Day. During each episode, we'll show you the hottest fashion and beauty items in Style Finder, buzzworthy and expert back products and influencer trends, and elevated essentials and better basics. This is Shop All Day Red, White, and Blue Basics. Welcome to Shop All Day. I'm Chassie Post, Yahoo Contributing Editor, and we are so excited to show you some products to start your summer off right. We're diving in with everything you need for your patriotic celebration next week. And see the QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. And we've created a new text to shop feature. Simply text shop to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's jump in with pool and beach essentials that'll complement your 4th of July bash with a little red, white, and blue. Okay, so we're gonna start with bathing suits and I am so excited about this one. When I saw the price, my jaw almost dropped on the floor. But let me tell you what I really love about this suit. First of all, it's got two of the biggest summer swim trends in one. So this asymmetric one shoulder, huge trend you're gonna see everywhere. But this fun ruffle, I love a ruffle for summer. So this detail is another huge trend this summer you're gonna see everywhere. But it doesn't stop there. I mean, this suit actually has Two secret weapons hidden in here. It's got a mesh tummy control panel, which thank you, thank you, thank you, right? And it's also got this ruched detailing here, which is really figure flattering. Okay, so we found you the bathing suit, but now let's move on. This cover-up is the number one best-selling cover-up on Amazon, over 12 thousand ratings and I tell you these stats because I love the stats because I love to see what people are really into and what they're buying I get FOMO and I want to know so what I love about this is it's kind of how I want to look on the beach it is effortless it's cool you throw it over your bathing suit it is a perfect cover-up right I mean it's got this deep V can you see how cool it is sort of the roll up you push up the sleeves on the side and it's cut up you know, on the legs, so it's super flattering. But what also is great about this cover-up is it kind of does triple duty. So it's perfect, you throw it on when you're at the beach or the pool, but you can take this little cover-up and it can totally be a dress. I mean, you throw it on with a slide or a tunic, you put it on over your shorts or a jean, and it really works. Um, I also really like that it is size inclusive. So it goes from extra small to 3XL, and the fabric is super comfortable, so you're not gonna be hot in it. So this is a winner for sure. But <laughs> next, I cannot believe these adorable little flip-flops. So look at these bow jelly flip-flops. Do you guys remember jelly? I loved them. What I love about it is this little oversized bow, I mean, it elevates it from flip-flop to <laughs> sandal status. I mean, this can go anywhere. Super duper cute. All right, so next, look at these canvas totes. I, I just couldn't believe it when I saw them. They are so, so fun, right? Like these graphic totes, they totally have attitude. And this has been a big trend, you know, having uh, phrases and words, but they really sort of capture the feeling of right now because we all want to get away, right? Now that we can travel. But how cute is that? Poolside or weekend vibes, getaway. But what I like about this so much is it's really high quality. So it's got the canvas and it's got you know, real leather handles, which you almost never see for the price, and it's a perfect size. This was such an exciting find for me. All right, so, dad hats. <laughs> dad baseball caps. This dad trend, I love it. This little hat, I mean, it may be a dad hat in front, but check it out. You know, business in front, 
ponytail party in back. So your ponytail or your messy bun, you can stick through the back. It's cotton, it's great for throwing it in your beach or your pool bag. They come in such fun colors from denims to tie dye, solids and more. And for the price, I mean, super duper affordable. Another super duper huge hair accessory trend this season is the bandana. And we have seen tons of celebs, both guys and girls work this look, but I don't know if you've ever tried to sort of perfectly tie a bandana. It is not easy. So I am thankful for both of these little shortcuts. So first up we have, you know, the top knot headband. And the top knot headband is probably the number one hair accessory trend over the past two years. So these are super cute. So this is one style, but another way to get in on that bandana trend is the rabbit ear. Now, I love the rabbit ear. You know when you see people and it looks like they've tied the bandana? Well, that's a lot harder than it looks. This is tied for you and there's little wiring here in the ears. So you can stick it up if you're feeling festive. You can lay it down if you wanna be a little bit more low key. Six of these for the price. You can give to friends, how cute is that? Okay, so now that we've sort of got our looks together, we've got a little kit that's gonna help us take care and you know protect our skin. And this is from Sunbum. It is a great sun care kit. And I love this company. What you're gonna get in this little kit is the SPF 30 um, Moisturizing Sunscreen Lotion. And this is the sunscreen that really started it all for Sunbum. Their fans say that it smells like summer. And I gotta say, I do love a, the good smell of like a good suntan lotion. Um, it brings back a lot of memories. But you're also gonna get their great little SPF 30 um, sunscreen lip balm, and they've got a new uh, flavor coming out to protect your kisser uh, this year. And also their cool down after sun lotion, which is aloe and vitamin E, and it's so, so, so refreshing and hydrating, so it feels great. And last but not least, I've got to tell you guys, this little miracle is called the Stila Save the Day Eye and Lip Perfector. And what it is, it is a makeup remover stick. So <laughs> just in time for summer, I can't tell you how many times I've walked out the door and I think I look all really cute and then I see a mirror and I see that my makeup has melted down my face. So this comes in really handy because on one side, it's got this little gel so you just wipe it on and then um, swipe it on and then you wipe it off. You don't need any water. And it's also got this precision tip. So, you know, if you're trying to do that little cat eye, it helps you sort of clean up and make sure that you get it just right. It's from Stila, which is a brand that, you know, makeup lovers just are, uh, you know, obsessed with. And so this is the perfect thing to have on hand during the summer to make sure you know, we all make mistakes, right? But it's a quick cleanup. So let's run through these products one more time and you can scan the QR code on your screen to get instant access or text shop to the number below to see all the products on the show. We've got the asymmetric ruffle swimsuit. We've got the bathing suit cover up. We've got the jelly bow flip flops. The hold everything tote. The dad baseball cap the bandana top knot headband and the rabbit ear headband. We got the sun bum travel sun care kit and the Stila save the day eye and lip perfector. That's it for Style Finder. Up next, Adriana Brock is talking all things summer hair with celebrity stylist and global creative director at Color Wow, Chris Appleton. So stay tuned. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. 
To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Uvalde, Texas, a small town that has become yet another landmark. How long do you think it took for all this damage to occur? Can you tell us what, what it was like? With our NBC News exclusive. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to you today. We've got a lot to celebrate yes. on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it! Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Adriana Brock, Shop Today Editorial Director, and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders, celebrity trendsetters, and the buzziest influencers on the internet. They're gonna share their favorite products and the must-have items to shop for right now. And we're kicking it off with celebrity hairstylist and the global creative director of Color Wow, Chris Appleton. He's here to share all of his tips and tricks for getting amazing hair this summer and to show us some of the brand new products from Color Wow. And don't forget, there's that QR code at the bottom of your screen. Just use the camera on your phone and scan it to shop these products. You can also text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're featuring today. Hey, Chris, how are you? Hey, I'm so good, how are you? Good, it's so good to see you. I'm so excited because you are known as the king of hair. You are the man behind some of the most famous women's hair. You have over 1.8 million followers on Instagram. You must get requests like every single day for hair tutorials and you know, style advice. What is your number one most requested hair tutorial? I think women want to know, basically want to know how to give the hair a good blowout, how to give the hair just like bouncy, healthy, glossy looking, you know, shine. You know, like it's a look they want to master. Probably one of the most watched videos on my YouTube channel is Jello Super Bowl hair. Oh. More, you know, that's definitely a look. You know, yeah. she has a lot of hair, a lot of bounce. Um, but if you tailor that down to, you know, every day, people just love that bouncy kind of sexy hair. You are the global creative director for Color Wow, and there's a brand yes. new product that just came out. It's called Extra Large, and it's a bombshell voluminizer. So that's talk to right. me a little bit about this product and how women at home can use it to get great hair. When you walk, your hair should walk with you. And I think a lot of women struggle to get the volume in there flop it can go flat so i think what was great about this is the fact that it really really amps up the volume fattens the hair up but in a way where the hair just moves it flips over from side to side it has bounce and shine so now that we're in summer there's also two products from color wow that i think are really great i know we've got dream coat here which is like a little raincoat for your hair and we've also yeah. got this Dream Cocktail, which is a coconut-infused leave-in product. Tell me a little bit about these and why every woman should be using these this summer. Coconut Cocktail is basically like a leave-in treatment for your hair. It's perfect for anyone that has dehydrated or dry hair. The blow dry in the hair, it transforms the texture of hair. Yeah, and what about the Dream Coat? I know this is a Today.com reader favorite, so tell yeah, me a little bit I mean, about that for summer. It's a scene for hair. It's like an umbrella for your hair that's invisible. It protects any moisture, effectively, absorbing into the hair. Then it has, actually has waterproof technology so the water actually bounces off the hair it can't ruin your style it's kind of the secret behind a lot of my looks you know transforming that really silky glossy hair um and, and keeping it 
think is one of the most important things, especially in, like I said, if you're in you know, humid atmospheres or if your hair tends to frizz or doesn't hold the style. Yes, it is the best for frizz and I'm from Miami, so I know all about the humidity. Moving on to like the blowout, you said that's sort of like your signature look that you've know, you're known yeah. for. And with this new product, but talk to me a little bit about your favorite products to get the perfect blowout. We've got the Leandro Limited uh, rollers and we've got the parting tool. Oh tools. yes, so these are the Leandro yeah. Limited mocha rollers they stick to everything there is no extra heat involved but they do give you a low voluminous kind of a bounce to the hair which i think is just always you know like in fashion yeah it's so cool it's it's kind of like a classic old school beauty staple that's yes. you're making really popular again and something that's new and we just want to mention you are a paid spokesperson for leandro limited but there is this new product that i am obsessed with and it's very 2021, it's the parting tool, which gets you that like Gen Z popular middle part perfectly. Talk to me a little yeah. bit about this one. It's very unique. I've never seen anything like it. Basically like a headman that you just put through do that perfect part. So this is just a great way. And I think a lot of women struggle to get that really clean. For me, it always starts the style off and keeps it looking super professional. That's amazing. Uh, talk to me a little bit about your favorite summer look right now? Like what is on trend? What is the hairstyle of the moment? What well, is you know what's, exciting I think, about? I think what's really come in and I think what is kind of really fun to see a lot of women play with is the curtain bangs. But with the curtain bangs, there's no commitment. You have the face frame. I love that. They can kind of blend into the rest of the hair if you don't want them to be a feature. So curtain bangs are definitely really big this summer. I love it. Thank you so much, Chris. It was so oh great God, seeing you. you. So thank, thank you, you so for so sharing much. all these products. Thank you so much. Have a great day and happy hair days. Let's run through all these products on one more time. And if you saw anything here that you're interested in purchasing, simply text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we shared on today's show. First up, we've got the Bombshell Volumizer from Color Wow, the Coconut Infused Dream Cocktail, the Dream Coat, the Leandro Limited Velcro Rollers, and the Tokyo Tor Parting Tool. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Next up is Jen Fallick bringing you better basics. Stay tuned. Uvalde, Texas, a small town that has become yet another landmark. How long do you think it took for all this damage to occur? Can you tell us what, what it was like? With our NBC News exclusive, So many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Hey everyone, welcome back to Shop All Day. 
I'm lifestyle expert Jen Fallick here to show you some useful products that will help you host your 4th of July party and any other summer gathering. And see that QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. And we've created a new text to shop feature. All you gotta do is simply text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's do this. I've got some creative items that will help you entertain and stay cool while celebrating. Let's start with products to help you create an epic food spread. First up, you know, grilling is the main event of any 4th of July bash. These are copper grill mats, and it is gonna majorly cut down on post-party maintenance. When you host, sometimes the most annoying thing about hosting a summer barbecue is cleaning the grill afterward, but these are gonna make sure that food is not sticking to the grill, so cleaning becomes a breeze. It protects the grill grates, and it makes sure that when you lift your food off the grill, it doesn't fall apart, because it is so frustrating when you have this perfectly cooked burger, you go to lift it up, and it breaks in half. Even the most expert grill master can have this happen. This is gonna protect you from that. It's also great to use for grilling veggies that can slip through the grates, and it's amazing for keeping flaky fish from falling apart. You know, presentation can be everything. You want it to look good and taste good. Again, these come in a set of three. They're about 16 by 13 inches, and they will work on gas, charcoal, and electric grills. Now, once you've got your perfect burger, you need the perfect condiments to go with it, and this is truly innovative. This is a chilled condiment server, and it keeps your ketchup, mustard, and any other fixings cool during your next outdoor get-together. Simply fill the bottom with ice. It keeps everything nice and cool. You've got five trays on top, and I love that it's got a little door here, so it keeps it protected from any bugs, flies, anything like that. You can keep everything nice and safe inside, and it's gonna keep everything nice and cold. And this server has over 1,200 four-star and up reviews on Amazon. So it is definitely a tried and true essential. Now, gotta get to dessert at the end of the celebration. And this is a tool that's gonna make cooking easier. This tiny waffle maker creates snack-sized, star-shaped waffles in minutes. And I think it's so fun for a summer barbecue to have a little dessert bar where you've got a waffle, you have all the fix-ins, and you know, some fun things to complete the treat. The non-stick four-inch cooking surface is really easy to clean to, and the waffles lift up in one step. It heats up quickly and evenly for perfectly cooked mini waffles, and it's so simple to use. Really, your guests can use it themselves, or you can have someone stationed there making them up and everyone cut on top. It's like a modern take on a Sunday bar. There's really no set required. You just plug it in, and you are ready to go. Also, it's compact, so it stores neatly in cabinets and drawers. The last thing I feel like anyone needs is one more bulky appliance to take up a ton of space. This is great, so it just slips right into a drawer. And a bonus, it comes with a recipe guidebook that has plenty of yummy waffle ideas from sweet to savory. Now, you need to take care of the drinks for any good party, and this is the Igloo 60 Quart Roller Portable Cooler. And it is gonna keep up to 90 cans cold in this thing. I love it because it looks retro and I just think the look of it is so cool. It kind of becomes an accessory unto itself as part of the decor, but it also has really modern benefits to it. So it's got oversized wheels, so super easy to roll, and a telescoping handle here. So no matter what your height, you can comfortably wheel it. It's not gonna get stuck in the dirt and it makes it super easy to travel with. Also, I love these got cup holders on the top and they're self-draining, so not only can this be your cooler, it can also sort of be your cocktail table. And it's got riser technology. So riser technology means that the bottom is elevated, so it keeps it off of hot surfaces. So again, everything stays cold. The spacious cooler interior features eco-friendly thermocool insulation, plus this next item will really help you and your guests beat the heat. These are Sun Squad personal fans, and they are super affordable, and they come in these adorable designs, too. Not only are they functional, for a quick break is, but they can serve as table decor. You can place one in each place setting to keep guests cool. If you want, you can even find like the letter stickers and put your guests' names on them. I love doing that. Um, these are great for the kids as well. And added bonus, these fans will help keep bugs at bay. Just a quick little flick. You get those mosquitoes away, and you can also send your home with them at the end of the party as a party favor that they can actually use all summer long. These are a smart bulk buy. They're one of those things that I love to buy a bunch of now, keep them somewhere, and then use them throughout the entire season. 
another awesome thing to buy in bulk, maybe get a couple in case you've got guests over who bring their playful pooches, is this Sun Squad for Target Stripe Cooling Dog Mat. We know that the heat can be a little dangerous for pups and they tend to get very excited and can often overheat themselves. So this mat has a cooling gel insert to help keep your dogs nice and chill out in the sweltering heat. You can put the mat in the freezer or fridge even if you want to, to give it like an extra boost of cooling, but you can also just put it out as is and the gel mat inside is gonna keep it nice and cool. The mat size is really best for dogs that are around like up to 50 pounds in weight. And I love the idea, again, of having a few of them sort of around so the dogs can play and then they have their little spot to go, cool down, chill out, put a little water next to it when they need a rest. Next up, somewhere for the humans to sit down. We've got these Tommy Bahamas chairs and when you need maximum comfort and maximum relaxation, a good quality beach chair is going to be your summer best friend. And these are really, they're not just good for the beach, but you can also use them for your backyard. You can have for a barbecue gathering to expand your seating. Because again, sometimes more people show up than you plan for. You want everyone to be comfortable. These are perfect to have on hand. What I love about these chairs, I actually, my family and I own these, is that they're really lightweight. So they're super easy to carry. You can kind of see here, it's got little backpack straps. You can literally swing it over your shoulder like a backpack to be hands-free. And when I'm going anywhere with two kids, I like to be hands-free, so it's key. And another feature that's great about these chairs is that it has five different position options. So for maximum comfort, whether you want to recline and chill or you want to sit up a little bit and read, also, there's a towel bar along the back, so it makes it really easy to keep your towel handy and stand free between swims. You can also store a t-shirt there, store some things in the back, so it keeps everything organized when you're out and about. And then, finally, something else that my family is loving right now are Turkish towels. So if you're hosting a 4th of July bash or really any gathering where there's water involved, Turkish towels are a must. I am really absolutely obsessed with them right now. What I love about these is that they look cool, first of all. You always want towels that look kind of cool when you're storing them. You can roll them up nice and small. So look, we've got the whole pack of sticks right in there. You barely need any space to store them. They're thin, so you might be fooled and think that they don't really get the job done, but you will be shocked. They are so absorbent. They can dry you off in seconds. They themselves dry quickly too. So these aren't the kinds of towels that someone uses once, throws on the floor, and then you have to keep kind of you new ones every few minutes every time someone gets wet. Instead, this can be the towel that can be used over and over again. They're also naturally sand repellent, so no one's tracking sand and dirt inside when you bring the towels in after a party. Comes in a set of six, fun poppy colors. Like I said, they're really easy to store, and I love the fringe. You can roll them up. I kind of do mine in a basket at home, rolled up with the fringe hanging over. They look super cool, very on trend, kind of with the boho chic design. And you can know which is yours because all different fun colors. No confusing towels between people. You'll be nice and dry, cozy. Also, can tie it as a sarong. It's a fun fashion accessory. Side bonus. Lastly, you are gonna wanna remember all of these fun times that you're having this summer with all these great things at all your backyard parties. You need this Printomatic Digital Instant Print Camera from Kodak. It's a modern take on a classic instant print concept, and you can use it at all your summer parties as an on-demand photo booth. I love to leave something like this on a chair with a basket with fun photo booth props that kind of cues people in that they should be over there taking fun pictures. And you can encourage your guests to ham it up and snap a pic. The bonus of this kind of activity is that it guarantees that even if you're too busy to take photos, which I feel like always happens when you're hosting, you can still make sure that all these special moments are captured. Kind of get your guests to do the work for you. And we all take so many pictures on our phones, but rarely do we actually have them physically printed. When you have physical prints, you realize how much you miss putting them on walls, giving them to friends, writing notes on them, throwing them into an album. These are gonna give you that fun, nostalgic feeling of actual prints, and they're so easy to use, you guys, that even the kids can get involved. So it becomes an activity that the entire family can enjoy all summer long and beyond. Let's go through these products one more time, and you can use the QR code to get instant access to these items. We've got the copper grill mat, chilled condiment server, the dash waffle maker, the igloo portable cooler, the personal fan, the cooling dog mat, the Tommy Bahama chair, the Turkish towel set, and the Kodak instant print camera. And that is a wrap on all of your better basics and for our show. So we hope some of these items caught your eye today. And if you miss something you like, don't worry. We have got your back. 
Simply text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products that we shared on today's show. Tune in next Thursday for another episode of Shop All Day for super chic summer style finds. See you next time. When you think Texas, you think beef, brisket, and barbecue. But here in Austin, the state's capital, there's so much more than that. We've got folks and chefs from all around the world who are putting their mark on this city's culinary scene. And in fact, the spices and traditions that pay homage to their families are making Austin a hot food scene. It's really kind of this melting pot of different people, their culture, and their food. The creativity and, and the flavor that they put into the food is really artistry, right? It's really the diversity of food. Like, you can get some of everything here. So what keeps Austin weird and tasty? We're about to find out. It's time to head out of Studio 1A and hit the road for a new kind of culinary adventure. Follow me as I taste some of the most iconic foods around the country and meet the families behind them. Together, we're going to learn how a good meal has the power to connect us to our past, our future, and each other. Austin is home to over 1,200 food trucks in food parks just like this one. But we're here for one specific truck. We're here for Tony's Jamaican, serving up fine Caribbean fare to Austin for more than 10 years. Meet food truck owner Tony Scott and his wife Kim. From humble beginnings in Kingston, Jamaica, Tony has made Austin his home since 2003, and he has always had a passion for flavorful food. When did you start cooking? How young were you? 10. Tony's mother, Hyacinth, taught her sons how to be self-sufficient, especially in the kitchen. So you learned from mom early on? Yes. What was it about cooking that you liked? I don't know, I like food at those days. <laughs> those skills learned during childhood would help Tony define his career. For nearly a decade, he worked a small beachside business, serving jerk chicken and drinks to tourists in Jamaica. But after 9-11, tourism to the island stalled. So Tony moved to the U.S. in search of better opportunities, eventually landing in Austin. With construction booming in the state capital, Tony quickly found a job as a painter, but it was his homemade lunches that reignited an idea. You're working, you're, you bring in Jamaican food that you made, some of your friends taste and say, where'd this I, come from? I, yes, I cook my own food. You know, and they were like, oh, you should, you know, open a restaurant. And it's been 10 years. 10 years now. The 60-year-old chef opened Tony's Jamaican food truck in March of 2012. And his wife, Kim, has been one of his biggest supporters since the very beginning. What was the first meal he cooked for you? Curry chicken and rice. And he invited me over, and once I had it, I didn't want to ask for more. You know how ladies are, we try to eat a little bit, maybe the salad kind of thing. Don't want them to know that we that greedy. But it was so good, I asked for seconds. So when Tony says, I want to do a food truck, your reaction? I said a what? <laughs> I said a food what? And I knew nothing about food trucks or however, so it was just all his idea. I just followed along. He said he wanted to do something, he had a vision. I said, okay, let's try it. Despite high praise from friends and family for his grub, Tony's business wasn't exactly booming from the start. When you first opened up, were, was it successful right away? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I came out here 10 o'clock in the morning and I was all here until three o'clock the next morning. Mm -hmm. I make $37. Wow. And, you know, I was still happy when I go home and she was like, how much money do you make? And I was like, $37. And she break out laughing. <laughs> and I was like, don't worry about it. And next day I come and I make $50-something. Mm -hmm. And the next day I make $80-something. And I said, okay, I'm seeing increase. Tony taking advantage of the South by Southwest crowds that flocked to Austin in early March. Shortly after the festival, his fledgling business got a big boost with a small write-up. Kim, what, what, to you, what was the game changer? What, what put this place over the top? Wow. His presence and his dedication. 
jerk chicken and hot sauce. Now, loyal customers are visiting this hot spot daily, decked out with the colors and vibes of Jamaica. From curried chicken and goat to jerk everything, food fans walk away feeling the island love. In 2018, Tony laid down more permanent roots in Texas. You opened up a brick and mortar restaurant. Were you nervous about that? A little bit. It was well, a little. Let me. Kim, were you nervous? Oh about yeah, that? I'm so glad you asked me that question. Yes, I was. It was something totally different, and from a food truck going into a brick and mortar. I didn't come from the restaurant industry. I came from the finance side. Coming in, I was like, I was telling Tony, I said. I got this, you know, I can run this, no problem. But oh, no, 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 no. I was ringing the, the red light bell, like, hey, I need some help. It was challenging, but also it was fun. Kim now helping run the business for both locations. Family always mean a lot to restaurant. You know, sometimes she, she would say, you never know. One day it might be just me and you. You got to show right. me how to cut this meat. For breaking news in our changing world, Download the NBC News app. Women's basketball has been systematically held back after 49 years of Title IX. We still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Right here. Chicken and oxtail. Thank you Enjoy. very much, sir. Have a great day. You too. God bless. Tony Scott dishes out hundreds of plates to hungry customers each day, but he's best known for one Caribbean specialty. My mother is Jamaican. And in our house, oxtail was king. Yes. yes. Oxtail stew, oxtail and dumpling. Yeah. Oxtail, oh, wow. oxtail, oxtail. My mom is Southern, and she actually mentioned it to me. I said, oxtail. And she just said it was a beef. So I've never really had it. And then when you first had it? It was delicious. And I eat it all the time now. That's the problem. <laughs> Isn't it interesting that it was the cheapest cut of meat? Now it's considered wow. a delicacy. You go to all these oh. upscale restaurants, oxtail uh, ravioli, oh. oxtail rice, all the, it's now everybody's into oxtail. I know. No, I'm scared to go in a restaurant and not oxtail. <laughs> <laughs> the, price, the price is so high. Bring on the oxtail stew! <laughs> Tony frequently sells out of the succulent oxtail, and it was finally time to see and taste why. Welcome to the truck, Mr. Hall. Oh, Han. yeah. Oh, it smells good. It smells like Jamaica. Oh, hey, hey. This is the oxtail, oh. the famous oxtail that everybody go crazy over. Mm -hmm. And these are like the Jamaican product seasoning that we use. This have a good flavor to mm. it. Oh, wow. Tony's oxtails are seasoned with a spice mix that includes garlic powder, dried onion, paprika, black pepper, sugar, salt, and a few chef secrets. This is my product that I make. It's have like onion, it, it, um, bell pepper, um, scotch bonnet pepper. I also have a little bit of garlic in there. So this is like your own concoction? Yes. And then this is another Jamaican product they call Yava Blue Mountain Coffee. Uh, yeah. They say it's the best coffee in the world. Well, right. this is the Blue Mountain product of burnt sugar. Oh, wow. And this is what we pour on it last. 
give it that, that good color. Then we just mix this up. Make sure you rub it in properly. You want everything to rub into it. You know, normally, if you take a smell of it, even right now. Oh, yeah. You see, you, you, you can smell that flavor in it and it doesn't even cook. It smells, it smells good. Right. He then lets the oxtails marinate overnight. Then they're added to a pot with water and slow cooked for several hours. This what it comes out to be. Oh, now we're talking. For you to taste. Well, I came to Austin. The result, truly out of this world. You see how it fall off the bone? Mm. Oh, yeah. You know, we, we make sure we cook real tender because dental is very expensive. Mm -hmm. And you know, you go to some place, you have eating that meat and you have to be here to get it off the bone. You don't do that when you come here. Good thing Tony feels like talking. I'm too busy eating. And it doesn't stop with the oxtails. Oh, is it Mr. Hall? That's fantastic. This is curry goat right here. Taste that. <laughs> this is the jerk pork. Oh, jerk pork. I've never had jerk pork before. Oh. And that's also oh, wow. my homemade jerk sauce that I made. Whoa. Okay, this is the famous curry chicken. And this is the carrot. Oh, so at least I can say I have my vegetables today. Yes. Look at how tender that chicken is. Tony also serves traditional peas and rice, which brought on a wave of nostalgia. This is black bean. When you open that pot, I thought, wait a minute. Yeah. This is my mother's peas and rice. This is bread. And just when I thought I'd had enough? Wait a minute, I, I, I noticed. These are beef patty. I got to try them. Oh, that's a great crust. As a reminder of how far Tony's love for cooking has taken him. If you look up here, you see these little pats? Uh -huh. This pat right here is when I just started out. This is what I usually cook rice into. Wow. The reason why I keep this uh -huh. pat to show people is where Tony's Jamaican food is coming from. So what would you tell people who are thinking they've got a dream, they want to start something like you did. What would you tell them? First, you have to motivate yourself to do it. And never give up on your dream. My mama always tell me, don't make nobody tell you you can't do nothing. Tony, thank you so much. It's this a pleasure, Harley. It, it, it is it's, nice meeting you. It feels like I'm back in Jamaica. I'm glad you have that feeling. Everything but, gonna be all right. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to you today. we got a lot to celebrate yes. on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it! Yeah. 
Just a few miles from the hustle and bustle of downtown Austin is Mekon Bistro. It is a spot that's loved by locals and tourists alike for its Vietnamese comfort food. Who's the better cook uh, in the family? Um, I'm not gonna even bother asking my mom about that because my mom is hands down the best cook. <laughs> Chef Will Hyun and his siblings opened Mekon Bistro to honor their mother, Anne Hang. A refugee who fled Vietnam after the fall of Saigon, Anne working tirelessly to provide for her family in the United States. She took a chance to travel across the ocean with nothing in hand. Working ever since she's been over here, working from morning to night, uh, and still provide us with a hot meal every day. When Macon first opened, Will hoped that his mom would finally stop working, but Anne had other plans. Technically, she's retired, but like I said, she, she would not stay home. Anne's passion for food starting in her home country. In 1972, Anne married Kia Huynh. They had four children in Vietnam, and turning to cooking to help support the family. This is my dad and my mom right, right before the fall of Saigon. When the Vietnam War ended, the family was looking toward a better future in their homeland. But in 1975, the Viet Cong began to invade Saigon. Anne's husband fled the city first, Will leaving when he was just seven years old. It was scary. We left separately, uh, me with my uncle and my mom with my three sisters that came a year later, uh, because if you get caught, you were thrown in jail. Luckily, we made it out. We were rescued by uh, cargo boats, but uh, they rescued us. They took us to the Malaysian refugee camp. Will and his uncle secured refugee status, eventually reuniting with Will's dad in the U.S. In the years spent apart from his mother, Will began experimenting in the kitchen with a little nudge from his uncle. He told me that, you know, there's only two of us. You're going to have to do, you know, do your share. So learn to cook something. <laughs> in 1983, Anne made the journey to the U.S. with her daughters. But adjusting to a new country as refugees was a struggle. We came over, you know, nothing in our pockets. We, we relied on government assistance a little bit. Luckily, she's a great cook. Uh, so it, it wasn't bad for us at all. But growing up, that's how she you know, shows us that she loved us, by you know, putting all that love into the food. The family moving from Houston to Louisiana, finding work in the seafood industry. But Will wasn't so happy living in a small town. When his uncle invited him to attend high school in Austin, Will said yes right away. I fell in love with Austin. The beautiful lakes, the miles of trails, the music scene. What's there not to love? <laughs> Austin's vibrant culinary scene struck a chord. After high school, Will found work in several restaurants, dreaming of being able to showcase his mom's cooking. In 2015, the entire family moving to Austin. But Anne still wasn't sure about opening a restaurant. Asked her many, many times in the past to do something like that. She's dead set against it. She said it's just way too much work. Eventually, Anne agreed to share her recipes for just one reason, her family. She's, she's emotional because you know, she basically you know, she's doing everything for her kids. The first dish Will added to the menu, his mom's pho. So pho, you know, at a restaurant is basically how we do pho at home. Uh, when we cook pho at home, it's a big pot that's going to feed us for at least three days. 
Um, we have it both for breakfast. We have both for lunch. We have both for midtime snack. We have both for dinner and both at night for snack at night uh, until the pot's gone. With the help of his family, Will created several new dishes. Our menu does incorporate a lot of uh, fusion Asian dishes, um, and that is because of the, you know, the family business. Uh, my my mom's a cook. I cook. My sister cooks, my brother cooks. Uh, second beef dish was something that I've tried out. I consider myself a Texan. We love beef. It's a dish that my mom and I collaborated together to, to put out. Basically, this cubes of real nice tender beef that's been flashed in a wok. It's been six years since Macon Bistro opened, and Will and his mom still love working together. Làm ăn gia đình thì cái này cũng như giúp cho con thôi. Thành tự thấy nó nó tự xúc động rồi mình nấy thôi chứ mẹ đâu có biết làm sao giờ. Mình thấy nó hy sinh cho con mình được ngày nào thì hay nấy vậy thôi. Mình thấy nó xúc động vậy thôi. I admire her great. The courage it takes just to make that journey and to just stick with us no matter thick and thin. She's my hero. She really is my hero. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Uvalde, Texas, a small town that has become yet another landmark. How long do you think it took for all this damage to occur? Can you tell us what, what it was like? With our NBC News exclusive. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Using food to bring younger generations closer to their heritage happens in families all across America. And it's happening here at Habesha with a husband and wife team who's using their restaurant to bring their daughters closer to their Ethiopian roots. We want more than anything else people to be familiar with not just Ethiopian food, but Ethiopian culture. My name is Ine Fantu. This is my wife, Salama Bebe. We ran an Ethiopian restaurant called Habesha in Austin. When it opened in 2013, Habesha was the second Ethiopian restaurant in Austin. People stay coming in here, we give them the food, they said, where's the fork? Your hands. <laughs> Ethiopian food is eaten with injera, a fermented flatbread made with teff, a gluten-free grain. You'll see a family dining and everyone is on their phone eating and really not enjoying the, the, the event. Not you cannot do that in Ethiopian restaurants. You have to use your hands, you can't. Both of them. That emphasis on family is everywhere in Habesha, from the Ethiopian art and decor to Yidni and Salam's daughters, who can often be found studying at the restaurant. I think I was like around four years old when we opened, so like this is like my second home. Salam and Yidni were born and raised in different parts of Ethiopia. In the 90s, they left Africa to attend college here in the United States. Yidni immigrating to Texas, Salam to Maryland, where her family owned an Ethiopian restaurant. A chance meeting bringing them together. My dad was visiting a friend, dining at uh, her family restaurant, and she happened to be the waitress. And uh, he overheard a music playing and uh, asked her, hey, 
uh, where could I get the CD? And she was nice enough to, to grab the CD and hand it to him. But Yidney's dad was thinking about more than music. When he got home, he immediately gave his son a call. And he said, hey, just uh, call her and thank her for me. <laughs> <laughs> when he called me, I was like, I give it to your dad, not for you. <laughs> and then he kept calling me. I was like, okay, I think he's not going to give up. My dad was uh, one who hooked me up. To him, so. <laughs> <laughs> they dated long distance before Salam moved to Texas, the couple marrying in 2003. Their daughters, Edel and Azel, are now teenagers. I think we've always been around food. My mom's always cooking. For me, I love her pancakes. She makes <laughs> the best pancakes. Salam left the restaurant industry to focus on parenting, but Yidney knew his wife's heart was in cooking professionally. What I saw in her was the passion to own her own business. I really want to open restaurant, and I love the customer service and cooking. In 2012, Yidney and Salam finding the perfect location for their restaurant. Austin is a, a, a very unique town in that there is people from all walks of life. And I think part of the reason that we are successful is because of that diversity. Habesh's menu honors their Ethiopian heritage with many vegetarian dishes, from stewed yellow split peas to braised collard greens. They also serve more than a dozen dishes with beef. Texas is, uh, has a lot of people that loves meat, so we have a bigger selection of meat as well. And I think my favorite dish in that is the kutfo, or the steak tartare, when it's uh, done right. That's probably the best dish in the world. It's a ground beef and mixed with butter and spices. When the pandemic hit, Habish's popularity helped save them from closure. And I said, okay, this is it. I, I think we're gonna fall down now. And then people, they support us. They love to be here. They send us check. They send us cards. We have a good, good community. The donations from fans kept them afloat until they figured out a to-go plan. Before COVID, takeout business was only three or 4% of our business. And overnight, we had to do 100% of our business. And by nature, Ethiopian food does not take out, so we have to figure out a way to package the food, to market the food. After laying off most employees, the couple had to work nonstop. As the to-go business began ramping up, Edel and Azel pitched in to support their parents and save their beloved second home. I would write down like the orders, like the online orders, and I would like put them in the kitchen and cleaning, washing the dishes, cutting the injera, like folding it, boxing up to the orders. They did a lot and they're part of the reason why we're still around, so I'm sorry I get a little emotional when I talk about them, but uh, yeah, they're, uh, they're incredible. They're uh, just a uh, love of my life. One of the things that we instill in them is knowing who they are, uh, where their parents came from, and learning the culture, learning the food. Salam is looking forward to a busier future at her dream restaurant. I want to uh, grow this business, and a lot of people, they never had Ethiopian food. They had Chinese food, Italian food, or Indian food. So they don't know about Ethiopian food. I'm really proud of her because like she she gets frustrated at times, but she doesn't let that like stop her. A really big inspiration to me. Whenever things get hard, you just keep going. The best part working with your partner is the fact that you're there for each other, to comfort each other when it's down and uh, to be there when your partner needs you. The best part of it, he knows what I can't do. He covered the same thing. He cannot cook, <laughs> <laughs> so okay, she can handle it. With Austin's welcoming atmosphere, it's no surprise that more chefs are putting down roots in this fast-growing city. It's everything from James Beard, award-winning chef, 
and taqueros and even home cooks. The thing that makes a food scene good is different cultures meeting each other and being able to influence each other. The fact that anything is possible is what makes Austin such a cool place. One thing that rings true here in Austin, no matter your background or culture, there's room for everyone at the table. Okay, I have been bursting, bursting to talk to Viola Davis. She is, to me, just stunning. The kind of person you want to get to know on so many levels. Yes, she is arguably one of the most talented actors in the business, winner of an Academy Award. And now, she's only a Grammy away from having the coveted EGOT, the Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony. But I couldn't wait to hear from Viola, the woman, the one who survived an unthinkable childhood, the one who witnessed abuse and endured hardship so painful, few people would have survived. But Viola, she overcame, she persevered, and she grew. How? She talks about all of it in her new memoir, Finding Me. Just talking to Viola, I wept in admiration, in awe, and in celebration. Hi, Hoda. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Wait, it's highlighted, it's dog-eared. I bound your book, the PDF, and made a little book out of it so I could carry it with me. Oh. Can I just tell you something? It is so meaningful and beautiful oh. and touching and um, I don't even know how to describe it, but it moved me to my very core. Thank to you. To my very core. It's so incredible. I mean, Thank I, you, I thought I knew you, and then I read <laughs> this. And now I'm like, wow. I'm so moved. And I'm also kind of mad at myself because I've interviewed so, you so many times, and I realized I must not have ever asked the right questions because <laughs> this book is just so full of you. So let me ask you how it feels during this moment. Here you are. You've put your life on the page and you're handing yeah. it out like a piece of your heart and you're mm -hmm. saying, this is me. Yes. Um, how does that part feel in this moment? Terrifying. It really does. It's a lot of, it's a lot of fear, you know, because I'm putting my life out there for the world to uh, judge, observe, you, you know, it's it, it's like that old saying, I, I know what I said, I just don't know what you heard. And I know what I wrote, I just don't know how it's going to be received. And I think that that is really ultimately what happens when you make yourself vulnerable. It's like running naked in a crowded stadium. So it's terrifying. Well, it is um, so full of, of heart and soul. Let me just start by saying, and I think I speak for a lot of people in America, I did not know what you have endured in your life as a young yeah. girl. I knew that you had struggles. I did not know you grew up hungry. What does that mean to grow up hungry? The hunger was just one part of it. It's growing up hungry. It's growing up um, exposed to that level of abuse. It's growing up feeling like an outsider. The thing about being hungry is you don't think about anything else. You get to school at eight, by 8.15 you're falling asleep. You're listening to people who say, oh, my mom made me breakfast this morning, I didn't want that cereal, and you're thinking, you didn't eat your cereal? You had cereal with milk? You know, your brain um, chemistry changes, how you perceive the world changes, and I'll tell you the worst part of all of it, is the deep, deep shame. Huh. Because how do you tell someone that you're hungry? Huh. How, do you, how, how do you say that to a teacher who's worried about maybe your grades, how you're progressing in class? It's a basic human need that's not being fulfilled and there's so much shame around it because you feel like, why isn't it being fulfilled? There was a line in your book where you said, like a, one of your friends came over to your house, opened the fridge and asked if you were moving because there was nothing in there. Yeah. How, how did you find food? How did you find your basic needs so you could continue uh, on your day? 
you find it. You know, what I started to remember because it's memory, right? When you go back and it hits you. Um, it's different almost than nostalgia. Huh. But so the memory is people who gave you money on the street. Hmm. I would go up to people and say, do you have a quarter? Hmm. Do you have 50 cents? It's going to soup kitchens, Catholic churches, friendships where you know parents are going to make three meals a day. So you form those uh, friendships. You go over to the house and you wait for the meal. Wow. I mean, there was there was this other part of the book. I think it's a chapter you entitled Running. And you were literally, as you call it, hunted down by young boys chasing you, calling you the N word. You were Mm -hmm. like, in a sense, running for your life. Yeah. In those moments, I can't imagine that was happening day after day, that kind of horrific bullying. It it was day after day. That's what it felt like. Mm -hmm. Now, was I actually running from my life? Would they actually have killed me? I don't know about that. But that's what it felt like. It's Mm -hmm. just like anxiety. They say anxiety is just fear of death. What I realized from a very early age was... I was born in a world that I just didn't fit into. And I did not have the language to understand uh, the power of race, Mm -hmm. the power of being dark skin, the the potency Mm -hmm. of being different. The power of that is just not how I was defined by those eight or nine boys. It's how the world defined me. (sighs) It's that fear of being black, what black meant. In, that, in this powerful caste system we have of how you treat people based on perceived value and mm-hmm. worth. And I was worthless. Hmm. That's what it told me. I was a child. Children cannot deal with the abstract, mm-hmm. right? We don't have those building blocks. And so it felt like I was running for my life and it, I didn't have any arms to run oh. into. Oh. So I was just <laughs> running. And when you say no arms to run into, you describe it's so poetic and sad. It like struck me over and Mm. over in my heart. But you even talked about how there weren't enough pages in the book to chronicle all of the fights that went on inside your home, what you were, what you bore witness to, what you felt helpless. I, I would imagine as a kid watching this in front of you. You do. It's, it's. It's the last of the acceptable violences is domestic violence. Nobody really cares. I'll tell you that. I I think it's a complicated issue to deal with. And um, so what happens is you sort of sweep it under the rug. It becomes your sort of dirty secret. Yeah. But every time you faced it, it is absolutely traumatic. If I felt like I was running for my life from the eight or nine boys, I felt then I had to go into a home where I was running from my life. Hmm. That's what it felt like when I would witness the violence between my mom and dad. And I, 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 I keep remembering these moments of violence that even happened at night in the middle of the street and not one window opened. No one came out to help. And I, 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 and I look back on that now because as a kid, we prayed that no one would see us. Huh. <laughs> huh. God. And then as an adult, I'm looking back and go, why didn't anybody see us or help us? Or did they see us? It becomes that complicated. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at eight on NBC News Now. Welcome back to you today. We've got a lot to celebrate (laughs) on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it! (laughs) 
in our changing world. Download the NBC News app. What was your survival technique? Like to live day in and day out in a home that felt like that and to go to school in a situation that felt like that, you had to have some place where you, little Viola, went to to live. How did you transport yourself? Well, little Viola, I had a whole technique of leaving my body. It was pretty awesome, by the way. Tell me. Um, I'd always go into the bathroom, and I would stay there for the longest time. And I had a whole thing where I just would focus on one part of my body, usually my finger, and I'd shut everything down. Huh. And after a certain amount of time, I literally would leave my body, and I'd go up to the ceiling, huh. I'd turn around, and I would look at myself. I dreamed, huh. I tried to achieve, and I kept secrets. You kept secrets. I felt like the keeping of the secret, the people not knowing it, sort of helped me to survive. I didn't understand anything um, uh, about secrets actually eroding you. Mm -hmm. That wasn't a part of my vocabulary, my understanding of human emotion. I just felt like if, if no one knew, then how they would see me is based on what I was achieving outside of my house. Uh -huh. I recreated myself. Wow. <laughs> wow. But when you recreate yourself and mm -hmm. another reality from yourself, the danger of that is you also disconnect. Yeah. And that's what I did. I disconnected. Same thing that I did when I sat on the toilet. And the disconnection, or like a lot of um, people who go through trauma, mm -hmm. when they compartmentalize, yep. which is also not good. Yeah. That's what I did. I compartmentalize. I use drive and ambition to replace feeling and vulnerability. Did you ever feel like your stuff was unhealable, like that was just going to be you? Well, I wish I could uh, store it away, mm -hmm. but I had to unpack it. Yeah. Here's what I believe. I believe that what connects us is not just the joy, is not just the achievements, it's also the sadness. Yeah. It's also the pain. Yeah. I feel that if I cannot share my pain with someone mm -hmm. else, the pain, the joy, the mm -hmm. achievements, then it's not real connection. But in order for me to share that, for me to have the ability to share that, I have to unpack it. One of the first quotes <clears throat> in your book is about faith. It says, I think human beings must have faith or must look for faith. Otherwise, our life is, is empty. I feel like that constantly saved you. Yeah. Well, absolutely, which is yeah. the belief in things that you cannot see. Yeah. Because there's nothing else. Mm -hmm. I think that I, I was, I didn't have anything else. But I always compare, you know, my life to that image of the first man on earth looking out at the ocean <laughs> and the mountains and the sky <laughs> and maybe it's raining and there's thunder and lightning and he has no language because mm -hmm. this is before language. Yeah. This is before psychology. Yeah. This is before people were named. This is before love or hate yeah. or anything. Yeah. And how then do you figure out life? How then do you figure out meaning? What, how do you communicate in or, anything in order to find it? That's how I felt. 
I have nothing. I have and chills. so chills right now on me. So what you what you then rely yeah. on? See, this is the power of connection. Yes. What you rely on are people who see you, people who really maybe see the pain, see the potential, see the talent, people who just love you, Ugh. and they carry you. You know, there was a moment, obviously, that changed your life, and it was when you flipped on the TV and the autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman came on and Miss Cicely oh. Tyson was starring in it. Uh. What did, you, what did young Viola's eyes see in that moment? Magic. Mm. I saw everything. I saw what I wanted to be. Mm. I um, saw my possibilities. I saw my value. I saw it all in her. And I was like, that's it. You know, it was a path, a blazing path for me. And listen, like I said, my sister Dolores is an incredible teacher right now. My sister Diane works for the Department of Agriculture in D.C. And um, my sister Anita went to business school, whatever. And for all of us, it changed us. Not even just in the acting field. It lit um, fire inside huh. of us that wasn't in our lives before. Because your sister Dolores, I think it was Dolores, who told you, we're not going to live like this. What, I mean, to think that all of these sisters were raised in these really horrific circumstances, yet somehow you grew, all of you. It wasn't like you weren't the one that got out. What was it that was in the family that made that possible for all of the sisters to get out? Well, first of all, you have to define getting out mm -hmm. because I know me, I do have some level of trauma and anxiety from the past. Sure. So getting out in terms of my profession. Yeah. Um, required drive. Yes. Drive is different than growth and healing. Now the getting out emotionally getting out is totally different, huh. which is why I wrote the book. You don't get out. That's what happens. You have to reconcile um, and own your story. Hmm. I didn't. I cut it out like it was the fat on an awesome piece of filet mignon. You cut out the fat and you recreate the story that you want to create. Hmm. The problem with that is that once again, you make yourself tough, you shut out the dark, you also shut out the light. And so that's what I realized when I was 28 is that I didn't get out. <laughs> Hoda, <laughs> I didn't, but I, 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 I didn't know how to sort of reconcile it. How did you, or did you? Ownership. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. Yeah. You either own your story or your story owns you. I'm not ashamed of it because I know that every single part of it made me who I am. I'm owning my story so people can be less alone. And I'm also owning my story because I want to love me. Hoda? <laughs> I mean, at some point, I mean, you know, come on. It's like, you know, I'm 56. <laughs> you know, I, I was listening to Alicia Keys' song, I Have a Voice. It's so mm -hmm. powerful. It's with Brandi Carlisle. And every time I hear it, I think to myself, I'm 57, and I think to myself often, like, when did, what took me so long to have it? You know, like, you do all these things in life. And you nod your head. And I had that same epiphany. It's like, am I going to be going to my grave with good enough? That's yeah. all I deserve. When did you, when was it that you knew your worth? When did you know your worth? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, I'm trying. The only reason why I'm silent is not because I don't have an answer. It's because I'm deciding if I want to say it or not. Because I'm, and I should just say it. It's a work in progress. Yeah. I started the journey in understanding the value of worth when I was 28 years old. Because as much as I said, I don't want to be my mom. I love, love my mom, but I want to be my mom. I realized I was my mom. Huh. She was my imprinter, you know. And I would say by the time I met my husband at 34, 35, I knew that I was worth more than what I was accepting in my life before mm -hmm. that time. I always define my life as, um, or life in general, as a relay race. So your purpose in life is just like a relay race. Great runners. Yeah. And each runner runs, runs their leg of the race and they pass a baton on to the next great runner and they run their leg of the race and that's how life goes. Yeah. But man, I just, as I'm getting older, I'm realizing life is about connection, but it's about you. Everything comes from you. So each of those great runners is just you at a different age. <laughs> It's young Viola surviving that path, but getting that baton to 28 year old Viola who says, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it Viola. I'm going to go to Juilliard. I'm going to do this or whatever. I'm going to work in the theater. I'm going to do the best I can or whatever. And then hits a wall and goes, oh my God, I'm going to give it to the 38, 39 year old Viola who's getting married and understands that now I got to now take another entity into consideration. And now I'm at 56 year old Viola. And one of the reasons why I wrote the book one, once again, mm -hmm. is because I felt that 54, I was dropping the baton. <laughs> Cause I was looking back too much, but life, that's how I see it. Oh. It's a whole relay race of you. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, Top Story with Tom Hamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Let's go. This is a critical turn point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Now, with your upbringing, and you, you have Genesis, your beautiful yeah. daughter, were you... As after you got married, yes, I definitely want kids. No, I definitely don't want kids. I'm not sure what I want to do about kids, given what you had seen. Definitely felt like I didn't want to get married or have children. Yeah. I, I didn't see being alone as not sexy. I thought it was sort yeah. of sexy. Yeah. I would see like Linda Evans uh -huh. at awards shows and um, 
I thought that was pretty cool that she went by herself. I thought, that's a strong woman. I still feel that way, by the way. Mm -hmm. I hit it. You okay. Hit it. I, 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 let's just say that. I hit it. You would say that I've achieved a certain level of success. And then I crashed and burned because I was like, this is it? <laughs> Why is this it? Because I stopped at success and not at significance. Mm. And I remember running into Lorraine Toussaint and I remember asking her, Lorraine, why did you adopt your daughter? Uh. And she paused for the longest time and she said, I didn't want series regular to be on my tombstone. <laughs> wow. Wow. And it hit me that my entire life has been defined by achievements taking the place of meaning. Mm. Oh, man. I'm so conscious, even with Genesis, that... I always want to say, you know, you're not an extension of mommy's dreams. Mm -hmm. She's her own person. But at the same time, I do sort of believe that she's, she's my legacy. She's wow. my hope. Oh. Wow. She's my meaning. I just rewatched your Oscar acceptance speech. Mm -hmm. And at the end, you talked about your parents. And you talked about how grateful to God you were. That those were the people who were chosen to give birth to you. And after reading your book, I found that so profound, knowing what yeah. you had been through. Why did you say that? Here's what I know about my life. What I learned from a very young age is radical love, radical forgiveness, huh. radical transformation. Mm -hmm. What I was giving with my parents is an opportunity <laughs> to grow. They gave me that ingredient that could either have killed me or had me grow in a way that some people never experience in their entire lives. Wow. And that's why when I finally ended the book, I ended the book with God kept me exactly where I was yes. at. Yes. Yes. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to you today. We've got a lot to celebrate yes. on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it. Yeah. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Ali Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Man, who's this? Uvalde, Texas, a small town that has become yet another landmark. How long do you think it took for all this damage to occur? Can you tell us what, what it was like? With our NBC News exclusive. One of my favorite paragraphs in the whole book, and there are so many good ones, is this one. Uh -huh. The question still echoes, how did I claw my way out? There is no out. Every painful memory, every mentor, every friend and foe served as a chisel, a leap pad that has shaped me. The imperfect but blessed sculpture that is Viola is still growing and still being chiseled. My elixir, I'm no longer ashamed of me. I own everything that has ever happened to me. The parts that were the source of shame are actually my, my warrior fuel. Come on! Come on, that's awesome! That is so awesome! I underlined it. I'm highlighting it when I get the real book. I'm going to keep it by my bed. It is so incredibly beautiful. Um, and again, just lastly, as we wrap up, the title is Finding Me. Have you, have you found her? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have. 
You know, I, told, I, I, I said it, you know, little Viola is celebrating. She's sitting right next to me and mm -hmm. she's happy that she's finally being embraced. Yeah. Well, Viola, it's a beautiful, beautiful book. I've been waiting for this book and people are going to devour this. I think you're going to change. I mean, you've already changed a million people's lives, but I have a feeling you're going to do a lot more with this. Thank, Thank you, so Viola. Much. I adore Thank you. you. Thank you so I much. You I'm keeping too, this. I love okay. You. Mm -hmm. I love you. See ya. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for doing this, John. Oh, my pleasure. It's so much fun Thanks to be out here me. talking about this truly extraordinary project, Prehistoric Planet. I say extraordinary because of the scale of ambition, both in what you're trying to capture 66 million years ago and how you're trying to do it in terms of the filmmaking. Right. So how did you embark on this? You got to kind of walk it back to the collaborations I had on the live action Disney animated updates, you know, like The Jungle Book, Lion King. We had a whole team that we assembled for those two films to try to figure out how to do really naturalistic performances and depictions and creating new, you know, rendering tools and simulations and all the things that create the magic trick that makes all these illusions look real, which is really, really what filmmaking is, right? When we were working on uh, The Jungle Book and Lion King, we were figuring out how to make these animals come to life. We had a, a whole workflow and a way to create things using a combination of virtual reality and game engine technology, a lot of cutting edge stuff. When they reached out to me through Apple to collaborate with the BBC on this project, it seemed like a great uh, uh, application for what we had been developing for so long. And we had really been studying planet Earth and all of the, what you might call the Attenborough mm -hmm. uh, documentaries because we were trying to look for reference for photorealism. And so we started to collaborate, figuring out how they did documentaries in, in the real world and how we created the you know, photoreal artificial world. And by bringing those two, those two traditions together, we, I think, achieved something that, was, uh, that I don't think would have been possible uh, at, an, at any earlier of the time or with a different group of people. It just feels like a documentary. Like you've got cameras 66 million years ago. I know it's a long explanation, but photorealism, what is it? How do you pull that off? Well, there's lots of tricks, things like ray tracing. You create a simulation around the way light bounces around and off of different surfaces. It creates the illusion of real light hitting a real object. Simulations, how fur, or in this case, feathers react, how they react off of one another, how they react to environments. In Jungle Book and Lion King, we created completely uh, vir virtual environments. We, you know, everything was created through CGI. But in this case, because we're working with the BBC and we're working with producers who had worked on documentaries, they actually went out in the field and shot plates in those real environments. And so we put our artificial dinosaurs into those real environments. And thanks to the technology that's available, we could make it integrate, you know, I think to a very high standard. And then there's sort of the educational side of it, which is you have to get the facts right about yeah. every one of these dinosaurs. I learned so much from working with these paleontologists and people who are experts in the field because I would, you know, my first thing was when they present me with different story ideas for each vignette, I'd say that seems like a reach and they'd, they'd explain to me why there's actual uh, scientific backing in the latest learnings. And we are in a golden age now of paleontology uh, and archaeology because we keep finding new specimens all around the world. For example, the eyes on dinosaurs, uh, they could tell by, from fossil remains that they were probably very sensitive to not just movement but color. You know, in Jurassic Park it was like, don't move, it can't see you, but in reality, they have eyes more like bird's eyes. Mm. And because they can perceive color, there's a lot of speculation as to the coloration that dinosaurs would have had. And we're starting to see that there's plumage as well. So the combination of feathers, crests, and very sensitive eyes to color makes you realize that there's pl there was probably more like the bird world than what we see. So there, there, there may very well have been spectacular coloration on these animals. Now, of course, what we do in the show is we don't want to break out that hard away from expectations. And so there are leaps that we make that are plausible and to the most part agreed upon by the whole scientific community. And so I actually learned a lot about, about the science. It's one of those weird ironies is that the older that you get, the more you wish you were still yeah. in school. Totally. <laughs> you really want to learn. Yeah. 
And so to me, it was um, just a wonderful education with the top people in the field. Well, you sound pretty fluent at this point in paleontology. Did you come to this? with a fascination with dinosaurs or was this fully a learning experience No, I just you? like, di I mean, dinosaurs are fun, I guess, you know, it, it's interesting because every new technology in cinema seems to be drawn to dinosaurs first. Everybody seems to, as soon as they have something new they could do, they want to use it to bring dinosaurs to life. Mm -hmm. There's something just fascinating about, I think, the scale and they feel like fantasy creatures and the fact that they really walk the earth where we are. And that they were here for so long is the other thing that I never realized. It just puts things in perspective. It's somewhat, somewhat humbling when you think of us as this dominant species on the planet, realize that we're just a blip. You can lead to an existential crisis when you think about that, how insignificant we actually it's are. Good. It's good. Yeah. You have to see yourself as, you know, the most important center of the universe, but also an insignificant speck at the same time. Right. And if you could balance those two things, it kind of prepares you for, for life's challenges and puts a proper perspective on things. Totally. One of the things that strikes me watching the series is that it might change the way people feel about dinosaurs, at least some uh -huh. dinosaurs. In some scenes, like a T-Rex, for example, is sympathetic. Did you think when you embarked on this, or maybe later when you saw it, like, oh, this may be shown in middle schools or high oh, schools sure. and educate people oh, yeah. about what these animals really were. Yeah, you know, I mean, something interesting that I've learned from, from my conversations with, with George Lucas that I've been lucky enough to have is as a storyteller, he's constantly reminding uh, us of the fact that, you know, stories were really created for, for, primarily for people coming of age. Like, that's what, that's what the myth, the tradition of the myth is the monomyth, the hero's journey. Primarily it's about going from childhood to adulthood and you know, the, the challenges that come with that threshold. And so two aspects I really like about this particular project. One is that you get to empathize with a really relatable story with these, with these fantastic creatures that are not human but yet go through all the challenges that survival and you know ha family and traveling from one biome to another mm. in search of food or to have uh, the next generation and lay their eggs and so there's that very sort of relatable uh, story about just the challenges associated with life done in a way that's because it's in an arm's distance it it's allows you to accept the themes of it because you're not really scrutinizing it. And on the other hand, I think it's also great because you're hopefully hitting people at an age, kids at an age, when they're first being introduced to science and first being introduced to this, how much is available to them uh, if their curiosity is uh, engaged. I think the older I get, the more I realize that if you could you'll never be more productive than if you find a career that you have excitement and passion around. I thought of myself as a lazy person before this because I wouldn't work as hard on my schoolwork as I should. And, but there were always things that I was engaged by that I would be obsessively you know, uh, thinking about or working at. And if you could line up your passions with what you're doing as a career, all of a sudden you're engaging on a, on a much more productive level. What you want to do is present all of these options to young people and expose them to things that might inspire them. And the whole, you know, the idea of paleontology or, or the STEM fields in general or science for kids to get uh, intrigued by it is, you know, one of those kids might be the next paleontologist. So in, in that way, I feel that there's like a, a, lot, of, a lot of good that could come out of it. But selfishly, I just loved working on it. And cool to use your name and your success and your platform for something like this. You know, um, between the BBC, Pl Planet Earth, David Attenborough, yeah. you know, the, that mixture, uh, and, and Apple, I felt like I was in very good company and it wasn't uh, relying on me. But people hopefully saw my contributions and understood that, that this is something I've been working at for a long time and this is the pinnacle of everything I learned up to now. Yeah, bringing all your experience to it. You mentioned David Attenborough. Yeah. It feels like to me it had to be him. He's very involved and, and want, is very curious about the science and wants to make sure that, that his name being on it is uh, that he's vetted the, the content. For me, when I first heard his voice over, it was when I really felt like, okay, now we've got it. The battle will be resolved not by surprise, but by strategy. And of course, Hans Zimmer and yeah. his company Bleeding Fingers, their music, coming into it, also connected it with the Planet Earth documentaries. So the whole package really worked quite well. It was just such a refreshing change of pace 
to be transported to this world. It's something that maybe different generations might come together and share one screen. That becomes, uh, I, I know I have three kids I really value. If there's something we all want to check out together, Definitely. that's rarer and rarer to actually be focused on something together and discuss it is, um, is a real treat that I don't take for granted as a, as a parent. That's the piece of it too, the conversation after. Um, you mentioned Hans Zimmer, the score is amazing. My one complaint is every time the music is uplifting, mm -hmm. I'm feeling good about a dinosaur, the score changes. Yes. And Attenborough says, but a predator <laughs> yes. is lurking. Yes. And I go, oh no, we're gonna lose the hatchling, aren't we? No, it's hard because <laughs> the science has to be real and just because you could control everything doesn't mean that you can manipulate the, right. the reality of it. Join us for a story you've never heard on a scale you've never witnessed. There are wonderful moments and then there are, there are sad moments. In, in, certainly in, you see it in sharp detail in, in, you know, in the natural world. And you know, the human condition isn't that far off. Good stories know how to incorporate all of that and contextualize it. And ultimately, hopefully, in a way that makes you think, but this is, it's, it's so beautiful in spite of all of that. I think that those documentaries, when they're done well, really capture that in a way that put you through it, but then ultimately make you feel like you're very blessed to be seeing this beautiful world and being a part of it. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to you today. We've got a lot to celebrate yes. on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it! For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to you today. We've got a lot to celebrate yes. on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it! Yeah. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. So I'm curious, John, where this love of films and filmmaking comes from. Because obviously you started as an actor before yeah. you became this huge director. I think, to go back to Queens? I think I always liked movies. I was an only child. My folks were split. So I remember spending a lot of time with my dad. And he loved movies. I loved movies. I was lucky enough to be able to be a short drive from Manhattan where there were revival mm -hmm. theaters. And there was always a theaters with a curated slate. So there'd be old classic films. And my dad would always, if he saw something cool that he thought I'd like, he'd He'd bring me to them and we'd watch movies a lot. And, and I think I always loved storytelling. I always thought that was cool. And, and I also liked to perform, like I liked being on stage and school plays and things. So that combo, now of course I never thought it was something I would do. Uh, it's just something I liked. It wasn't until I was like 22 years old that I decided to even try to, you know, try, even try acting or being in anything in the entertainment field as a, as a profession. And that's when I, I moved to Chicago and I started doing comedy there and learning and taking classes and learning improvisation. So I really got to be on the outside for a long time looking in so that by the time I actually got into a position where I was making a living there and that was my career, I felt very grateful. You're talking about putting the idea in your head of becoming a performer. You were knocking around a little after high school, mm -hmm. working a Wall Street job I don't yeah, think right. you loved. Then you make the natural leap from Bear Stearns to Second City. Of course. Just right. the way it's done in show business. I'd gone cross country. So I had stopped in Chicago yeah. and saw people performing on stage. And, you know, I think uh, the, the first night I went to watch a, a, a live show was Chris Farley on stage. Wow. I was like, these people are good here. <laughs> I didn't realize I was looking at a generational talent. I was like, geez, this is intimidating. 
you know. And I love that there was an audience that would show up to, to look at an unscripted comedy show and that it would come together and that they would figure out how to tell stories. And I thought that was fascinating. And so I learned a lot of lessons. And there's nothing like learning a lesson in front of a crowd. And, uh, you know, if you could win over that crowd, like that's, it's a good, yeah. you know, it's good. You know, everything that I do, I still have in the back of my mind, what, how is a live audience gonna react? That's so fascinating how even that plays into what you do now. I all those years all is, ago, right? it's built in and they're all steps up the it's ladder. Even, and also, by the way, I love being an audience member too. Like it doesn't have to always be me doing it. Boy, if there's a good show that somebody's like, oh, you gotta check the series out, I savor it. I savor it, like I love a good story. Well, mean Ukrainians were defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You were talking about different generations know you from different things yes. before we started yeah. here. And for me, it's swingers. Uh -huh. uh, so you get Rudy, you're in uh -huh. a big movie. Right. You think, here we go. Career is about Vince. to take off. You met, met Vince, Vince there. He was always a just incredibly entertaining guy and funny and quick. And to be introduced to Hollywood coming from New York and then Chicago, that experience was, was somewhat you know, inspiring of the script. I want you to remember this face here, okay? This is the guy behind the guy behind the guy. And so that was the thing that got us the attention, you know, all of us respectively, but me more so as a, as a writer especially. And after Swingers, I was hired to do a lot of rewrites and things, most of which were films that were just in development, many of which never got made. But I was making an income from doing writing. And that allowed me to not have to work or struggle and even able to get my first house. And so, like, I felt a certain amount of security in that. And, and also the sense that, hey, if I'm making a living doing this, then maybe I belong here. Because there's always the thing hanging over your head, like, should I, should I go home? Did we give it a good run and it's not working out? You know? But clearly I could tread water here and do well and then learn from every collaboration. And then finally, when I was, you know, with Elf, then it became a different thing. Now you really want to be careful not to, now that a lot of opportunities are coming your way, then you have to say, okay, so what do I really connect with the most? What do I feel the most for? What do I want to get involved with? And I found over the course of many films, I was being drawn to the, the technological aspects of it. Mm -hmm. I think my youngest self, the part of me that was the most pure was the one that was drawn to the first time I saw King Kong, you mm -hmm. know, Star Wars, Close Encounters. And I wanted to learn how to do all those tricks. I just loved those tricks. I wanted to see how they made the puppets come to life. And, and now I was getting to meet people who worked on that kind of stuff and you go to their shops and you go to ILM for the first time and you see all the miniatures and you see models and matte paintings and, and it really, felt special and so I did a little bit of visual effects in Elf because I was doing stop motion and every film I've done some of them 
missed, some of them hit. But there was always different layers of complexity I was finding in the rearview mirror. I was like, boy, I'm really building towards technology. I was a bit resistant to CGI until Iron Man when I really started to say, okay, CGI is another paint in my paint box here. And then we started to challenge things to make it even organic materials more photoreal like in Jungle Book and Lion King. And then as I do The Mandalorian, and as I work on the Star Wars properties for Disney Plus, you know, there we have a lot of other level of innovation where we're using video walls and using game engine technology and in-camera final pixel visual effects. And all the CG started with all the work that Lucas had done. And so I find myself, you know, now not just learning from the people who've done it, but innovating with the people and breaking through to the next level of what can be achieved. And so this collective, this creative collective that forms around a, a television show like that, at this point in my life and my career is really, really rewarding. And television, it feels very much like you're, um, it's almost like an academy at times. Like you have people coming in, people graduating out, people returning back to work. And that to me is uh, exciting and rewarding because I get to see the whole new crop with new voices and new perspectives keeping me fresh while I'm in, you know, able to pass down some of what I was able to learn to the people who really want to know how to do it and I could help balance them and give them the tools at least as best as I can for my, for my experience. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. It's interesting hearing you talk about Iron Man, Elf, and Swingers, because people may not realize that as big a hits as they are in enduring classics, none of those three was a sure thing. No, at, at, the, at time. the time, right? No. I mean, Swingers was your story, you invent, yeah, and you yeah, wrote yeah. it up, and who knows what's going to happen. And the next thing you know, people are wearing and by the way, suits all the time. It was not a hit in the theaters. <laughs> right. At all. But it made, a, it made enough of a cultural splash that it got us, right. you know, hey, who are those guys? So, right. And that's, you need a lot of breaks, and you got to be ready for them. And that certainly was a big one for us. But, but honestly, just getting into Rudy was a big break. Yeah. Just getting me an agent, like, that was a big step. And that movie didn't do that great in the theaters either, but it stood the test of time. You know, there's so many movies been made, so many TV shows. There are only a few that, that people keep with them and want to return to it. Like Elf, one of the most rewarding aspects of it is on TV every year. Yep. That's a big deal to be part of like that, those Christmas, that special set of Christmas movies that people return to, the nostalgia of it. That's I have great. big hits, but I also have big flops. And I think it, it, it's been, um, it's a good, it's been a good balance because you need, you need the, you need to trip over your feet sometimes to learn. That's when you learn. You don't learn on the hits. People who are fans of yours since Swingers, who followed your career, they root for you. I remember it was like, whoa, well, Favreau's doing Iron Man. <laughs> you know, and then it was like all the way Why? up. The Mandalorian. <laughs> no, but it was like our guy from Swingers. Yes. It's like he made it. Like we went through it with you or something. Do you have moments where you stop, John, and you're like, you and Vince knocking around L.A. Oh, back sure. in the 90s, sure. and now here you are doing projects like this. The whole thing's very surreal. And the places I've gotten to go, the people I've gotten to meet, people that I, you know, really 
looked up to and idolized and then you get to meet them as real people. It's all, it's all very strange. And just the amount of travel I've gotten to do. And I looked at my passport now because I just see all the stamps and how lucky I've been to go to all the different, you know, most of the continents in the, in the world. But everywhere I go, there's, there's probably somebody who knows who I am and I never feel like I'm uh, alone. I always feel like, I always see somebody looking at me and, and know that they know who I am. And that feels like you got a friend everywhere. Yeah. Um, even in countries where you don't speak the language, mm -hmm. it's, it, they, they, they know at least a version of me from either my acting work or some people, because they like Star Wars, or like Marvel. But as an actor, being a character actor throughout so many of those titles, I really feel like I could have a continuous presence, especially with kids who've grown up watching those movies. Remember, that's how I started. I started off as a character actor. Yeah. You know, when I moved to Chicago, that was the goal. And so to still be connected to that part of it, I feel very grateful for that as well. We were talking about your dad before we started. Yeah. As you described this run you've had, I'm thinking about him taking you to those little movie houses in Manhattan. Oh, my dad's really What does he happy. think about all that? Oh, he's, he's, he's um, I'm very lucky he's around and, you know, vital and young enough to enjoy it and travel and come with me to a lot of these things and premieres and festivals and he's been really there the whole time. It's a nice thing, we don't always get that. My mom passed away when I was very young, you know? You're lucky when you have it. And, and I think that's kind of the, the big takeaway is like, it doesn't, none of, this stuff, none of this stuff lasts forever, you know? You're here for a limited time. That you just gotta get the most out of it and, and appreciate. I feel like I'm at the point in my career too where I've done you know, everything I work on now is just like, is this going to be interesting and exciting? Is this going to be fun? Because it's really, there's a generational shift happening now. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm relevant because I'm, you know, still working and I'm relevant because I could teach others. And, but I really feel like there's a new generation coming up that's, it's their turn. And so um, that's also part of it. Like, how do you fit into that? I have to ask you, did you have any idea what you were creating when you came up with Baby Yoda? How Baby big Yoda, it was gonna yeah. Be? It wasn't like I said, hey, let me make a show about Baby Yoda. It was like, again, I was like, okay, here's the bounty hunter. He only knows that it's 50 years old. And like, that could be really cool if the big reveal is he thinks he's going after a 50-year-old and it's a baby. You stay right here. You stay. Don't move. You understand? Yoda is such a, of course, like one of those characters where you don't know that much about. George Lucas always kept a mystery around that character, where that character was from, but also a character with tremendous wisdom. You know, the archetype of Yoda is very strong and, and you'll see that archetype in every culture, every religion, you know? And so having a baby that wouldn't have any of that and what's the, the other extreme archetype, the pure, innocent, you know, new life innocence and, and, and love. And so that all came just from basically thinking about what's the most fun choice to make here. Like he thinks he has to do that. And now he's faced with this dilemma. I'm this, this, you know, this scarred bounty hunter who seems to, doesn't even have a face. And you question, do they still have a soul? And then this renewal of this extreme innocence facing it and that it becomes he is going to have to make decisions and change to engage with this beautiful thing. Uh, so that was, it all came from storytelling, but the surprise of not seeing Baby Yoda, of not seeing Grogu until the reveal at the end of the first episode of a new show on a new streaming service, I think was a very uh, important moment because everybody was like, eh, let me wait and see if I want to watch the show and then next yeah. thing you know everybody's talking about this like what is that and then <laughs> all of a sudden everybody's now wants to watch it when it first comes out so it's not spoiled for them and that anything you know with television that's the thing you got to surprise people every week and that's the tradition honestly of the uh you know all the cliffhangers that inspired originally george lucas was you know the serialized storytelling i learned about yoda in the theater and I didn't even think that was Yoda. He was like looking for Yoda, like, who's this guy? And I remember being surprised. And Star Wars was always about being surprised. I don't want to spoil anything for people who haven't seen the old Star Wars movies, but 
there's a, a, a familial relationship between Luke and uh, Darth Vader that was revealed. So there was always surprises and revelations and, you know, a lot of gasps, in, in addition to the gasps about the scale of the spaceships and the excitement of right. the, the technology and the space battles and the lightsaber fights. So I like the half century later spoiler alert. Just in case. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there might be somebody out there. Back in 77. Exactly. John, thanks so much. Great talking such a blast. to you. Ooh, the answer's calling. You need them most. Ooh, let it go. The Today Show's newest fan. This is the moment. A little Al Roker. Let me do it here. Let me do it here. Everybody, great to be back with you for a brand new Pop Star Plus when we're gearing up for that final episode of Stranger Things with an interview with one of the show's stars. And we had the great pleasure of having Steve Carell in the studio. That was just this morning, Studio 1A. We're going to share that conversation with you. And later, we've queued up a fun 90s throwback with Kathy Bates to celebrate her birthday today. All that is coming up at first, today's Pop Star Headlines. Chris Martin is first up on Popstar today. From the world's biggest stages to a tiny barroom stage, the Coldplay frontman is proving that he can do it all. He recently surprised a lucky couple when he was visiting the Stag Inn. We'll give him the credit. It's a bar over in the UK. After a quick chat with them about their wedding, Chris just decided to give him a little private performance. Take a look. <laughs> What's your name again? Hannah. Hannah. And? Jeremy. Jeremy. You're getting married in a minute. In, no, 28th of August. Oh, yeah, so I mean, it's but it's he's doing the food. Yeah. And that's, yeah. Alf, and that's Alfie's, <laughs> <laughs> Alfie's piano. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're a sky, oh, you're a sky. Walking by the bar, like, yeah, the guy th thinks he's Chris Martin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on in there? Yeah. Of course, if like any good bar, what do you do? You tweet that video out. Oh, yeah. so now people stop in there hoping to see yeah. this moment. Uh, Chris visiting them. But what a, they wrote, he's a lovely guy. He ordered a Guinness. Of course, oh. there you go. He's, Please. he's a perfect man. All right, next up, Focus Focus 2. Did Kevin Ford and Chris Martin, like the same people. <laughs> Disney just dropped the first teaser trailer for the highly anticipated sequel. It's been almost three decades since the Halloween cult classic debuted, and all three of the original Sanderson sisters. Sisters have returned for the next chapter. It's Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Kathy Ida Jimmy. They are back to terrorize Salem, get their revenge, and maybe put on one more memorable concert. Maiden Mother and Crone 2. We call on thee with one request. Help our intentions manifest. Lock up your children! The Sanderson sisters. I bet you're looking for the stage. Always. <laughs> I don't know if I ever saw the first one, but that reminded me of Light as a Feather, Stiff as a Board. Oh, yeah. Light as a Feather. So scary. That? My mom said never play that at yeah. a sleepover. But you did, didn't she? What is Maybe this? once or twice. You don't know Light as a Feather, Stiff as a Board? No. You ever oh. had a sleepover? It was like the trying sleepover. Trying to levitate a friend of yes. yours. Yeah. Really? Yeah, using oh. yeah. That focus, and the Ouija focus board. Focus, Another oh, thing, never do the Ouija board. That's right. Until Mattel came out with a game of it, I think. Uh, September 30th, uh, Disney Plus, you can see Hocus Pocus 2. Bruce Willis is up next. The actor headed to the big screen in a new action flick called The Wrong Place. Back in March, Willis announcing his plans to step away from acting after being diagnosed with aphasia, a condition that affects a person's ability to communicate. In his latest role, he plays the guy that we love, a former cop on a mission to rescue his daughter. Here's a peek. Call your dad. I'm just at the cabin, and I wanted to make sure that you're still coming. Why do you need to get to my dad? Fix what's broke. What? You made a crucial mistake. I'm going to do what I do best. Nothing personal, pal. You're just in the wrong place at the wrong time. See, and I'm going to watch that movie. That's yeah, yeah, of course. Wrong Goddess. Play. That's going to be in theaters on demand also on July 15th. Next up, America's Got Talent in a preview for tonight's audition round. 23-year-old opera singer Marissa Beddoes wowed the judges with her ability to hit high notes. Not only that, but also impressed, doing some impressions of some pretty famous voices. So what she did is she gave Heidi Klum like a die. It had different names of singers on and asked her to wow. call for various impressions while she was singing Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Wow. wow. Stevie Nicks. Someday I'll 
ambush upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me. Celine Dion! Where troubles met, where <laughs> the way above the chimney tops, that's where Theory? Birds fly over the rainbow. <laughs> why then a why can't I? Oh, that's perfect. Oh, this is funny, dude. Okay, oh. that's pretty good. Okay. I think he's not a golden buzzer. Yeah, golden buzzer. Come on, we're going to find out what happens tonight. Watch NBC and you can see how it all went. And here's a few more headlines for you, including the movie Barbie that everybody cannot wait to see. We got a little sneak peek for you of the cast. I mean, look at some of these names. Margot Robbie, Ryan Gosling, Kate McKinnon, and Will Ferrell. Some new photos from the set revealing a first look at the superstars and their characters. They snapped them yesterday in Los Angeles. Robbie and Gosling rocking some very bright colors as their characters, Barbie and Ken. In head-to-toe neon, the actors were caught skating along Venice Beach and having a good laugh. Wearing a more muted shade of Barbie pink was actor Will Ferrell, who donned some skates of his own. And according to The Hollywood Reporter, Will is set to play the CEO of a toy company in the movie. But we're going to have to wait a little while for this one to see it. Barbie slated to be released next summer. And finally, Taylor Lautner. We've seen him land crazy stunts on the big screen in movies like Twilight and Grown Ups 2. Well, it turns out that Taylor doesn't need a stunt double. In a new video, the actor's showing off some serious action moves straight from a wedding reception on the dance floor. Check that out. are into it, man. That's a heck of a wedding. Talk about a dynamic duo. Well, unfortunately for Taylor Lautner, that suit wasn't made for extreme dancing at weddings, and he did rip his pants. Everybody had a good laugh at it, but it looked like it was worth it. And there you have it, your Pop Star Plus headlines still to come. That's why I don't go to weddings anymore. Brett Gelman's going to speak to us about working with Winona Ryder and, of course, all the young stars of Stranger Things. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Allie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Let's go. This is a critical turn point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. And welcome back with the final episodes of the hit show Stranger Things, set to be released on Friday. We thought we'd catch up with one of the show's stars, Brett Gelman, returns as Murray and spoke to us about working with the cast on this, the final chapter. I think Murray has very much evolved this season. He found his people more. He's a less, slightly less isolated, slightly less uh, jaded person than he was in season three because he sort of learned what it meant to have friends. So you see that development a little bit, but he's still, you know, he's still a bit of a, a grouch and a, a grump. Yeah, a misanthrope, as they say. We love a good critic who calls things out how they are, you know, calls it like it is. So, and I, I think that that's very much a lot of what Murray's role is in this show. It's time. 
it is the darkest season. And I mean, it, the approach to Murray, I mean, you know, as I, as I play him, you know, I get to know him more and more. So it goes deeper and deeper. But I mean, things are always bad. My favorite part about playing Murray is that I get to be sort of the like urban character <laughs> amongst all these rural characters. And then he sort of brings like uh, a city vibe to it. Yet the Moja Delisi. A vot no ruchniki ni tibia svolit sevietskaya. Hi Jim. That I get to be one of the you know, a character of like somewhat comedic relief in this action thriller horror series, which is a kind of character that I grew up wanting to play, you know. And just, uh, I mean, getting to be in these, like, amazing action sequences and the intensity of it, you know, while still getting to really, like, delve into who he really is and, and the humor of it is just uh, the best, you know. I mean, getting to be in the Duffer Brothers world that they created as this character. What? Do me a favor and move your lover's quarrel elsewhere, okay? Oh, oh, oh. No, 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 this, no, no. not a God lover's quarrel, no. pal. Spare me! What is your problem? Please, stop talking! No! I can't tell you much about what Murray and Joyce are up to in it, um, but uh, working with Nit Winona is like, you know, it's a childhood dream. Uh, she's one of the greatest actresses and movie stars of all time and uh, I it's it's amazing to me that I can call Winona Ryder a friend of mine you know that's just uh, it's one of those just bizarre things of like pinching myself that this is my life and she we have a lot of fun we have a lot of fun when we work together she is like one of the kindest people and so funny and so getting to be you know, working with her uh, on this like almost every day that I, I worked on the show was uh, was just like an amazing treat. <laughs> Scoops troop, this is hmm, Bald Eagle. I've reached another junction. This is what? The fourth junction. All right, so if memory serves, this is right after the My Little Pony thesis. We went left, so he has to go right. right. Fly right, Bald Eagle. Fly right. Roger that. Fly right. No. Seeing the team's growth uh, has been amazing. I mean, they're really, like, just a great bunch of people. Really just so incredibly talented and nice and professional and fun to be around. So to see that uh, they haven't become, like, disaster people... <laughs> It's nice to see that that has not happened and that they've all stayed grounded. It's amazing. I'm really grateful that the Duffer Brothers uh, wrote <laughs> wrote me more stuff in the show, and that they that they made Murray's characters, you know, Murray's involvement in the show grow. And it's just, it's been, it's insane. It's it, you forget it because when you're working on the show, it just feels like family, you know that we're just all, you know, cast and crew. It's like we're here to do a job and get it done and have a good time together. When you step away and you are reminded just how massive the show is. I am the most excited for people to see me, uh, you know, just do amazing acting in this season. It's just, it's really remarkable and I think that uh, people will really, really enjoy my performance in a way that they haven't ever before. Uh, so that's very exciting to me. I'm no, I'm I'm really excited to. I, I just really this season. I think it's the best season, and, and I think the other three seasons have been amazing. But I think the it, it, this is everything like the up to the millionth degree. It is scarier, more action packed, and funnier. Than, than previous seasons, and there is such an amazing balance of all of that, that, uh, I mean, it's just like, it's really, it's really awesome. Thanks to Brett for hanging out with us, and again, volume two of Stranger Things, season four drops 
on Friday. All right, coming up, Steve Carell, a.k.a. Gru himself, fills us in on the latest word from the world of minions. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. From New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at eight on NBC News Now. It's a can't miss summer on today. They are walking strong, elegant, and pretty easy to prepare. How to cut costs on your vacation. Vicki has the answers. Every single thing you need for the best summer yet. Only on today. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. And welcome back to Pop Star Plus. Steve Carell's back as the voice of the villainous Gru in the new Minions movie, The Rise of Gru. And he stopped by Studio 1A to tell us all about it. Well, we are back, and check it out. Our plaza has been taken over. We've been minionized, and we love it. But what are they without the big boss himself, Gru? And we are joined now by Steve Carell, who returns as the supervillain in Minions, The Rise of Gru. But this time, Gru is 11 and 3 quarters years old and just meeting our yellow friends for the very first time. Take a look. When you guys tracked me down and responded to my help wanted ad, I was like, who are these tiny tater tots? And where did they get so much denim? Steve Carell, good morning. Good morning. We meet again. I know. Can you believe that this has had such staying power? It started with Despicable One, then two, then the Minions movie. This was, I think, the, is this the fifth in the franchise? Yes. Would you have ever thought this would be the one? Not until I saw the first one. Yeah. Honestly, because it takes like a year and a half, two years to do the voice and, you know, all the animation. They animate to the voice. And, and I thought, it's a good script. It's really fun. I love the people involved. But then when you see the final product and what the animators and directors, producers yeah. do to it, uh, incredible. When they first were like, we're going to have these little yellow guys that wear denim overalls. They have like, some of them have one eye. They speak a language no one can understand, but everybody kind of understands. Were you like, oh, that's going to be a hit? Exactly. Yeah, I was like, well, good luck. Good luck with those, <laughs> those minions. That's, that's an ace idea. And uh, yeah, they're geniuses. It, is it the minions that is the secret to the success? Or Let's be honest, is it Gru? It's Gru. Yes. <laughs> it's mostly Gru, I think. No, the Minions, the Minions, and they've been described as Twinkies or Tater Tots, yes. Little Pills, you know. They, they're, it's sort of incomprehensible to me that it became what it became. But people love them, and they're, I think it's because they're equal parts um, obnoxious and uh, endearing. They are, and mischievous. Yeah. I mean, I, I love them. I, that's the funny thing about it. It's like grown ups like these movies, too. You were telling me even your kids, who are now young adults, wanted to come to the premiere. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they were so excited. And my son, after the premiere, pulled me aside and said, Dad, seriously, you know, all kidding aside about this, you know, in a kid's movie, he's like, it was really good. <laughs> like, and I, I love it because he's an aspiring film student. He's like, I love the shots, I love the composition. You know, the, all the editing, the timing, like he really was into the movie as a movie. It was fun to see 
Well, the first one came out when he was like four or five, oh. and now he's 18, and so he has an appreciation in a different way. That, that's high praise, especially from a, a teenager. Yeah. Like just to say anything nice about anything a parent is involved in. Yeah. Like good, good on you. So let's talk. This is Gru's origin story. Yeah. I love that it takes place in the 70s because that's just a magical template for them to work on. The sure. outfits, the cost, the music, all of it. Yeah. Oh yeah, the music. I mean, it's all it's it's all a big part of what the, the nostalgia of it. I think is what's going to appeal to the adults. There's there is one joke in it about the length of time it takes to dial a rotary phone. Yes. that's maybe one of my favorite parts of the movie. It, it's incredible. Um, Gru is 11 and three quarters years old, which made me think about you in the 70s at 11 and three quarters years old. Yeah. What kind of kid were you? Well, I was really cool. Oh, really? Yeah. Like not no nerdy. No, anything. no, 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 no. I had it all dialed in. You were, were you a bully kind of too? No. Just kidding. No. <laughs> no, I had, like, I wore, I had long hair. Yeah. And I had, we called them flares. Oh, like bell bottoms? They were kinda, bell bottoms, yeah. yeah. I had, like, purple striped ones. <laughs> Um, so I was kind of rocking the look. Were Remember you, fry we, boots? Yeah, I, I used do. To wear fry boots. Oh yeah, and were you like a ladies' man? Did the they, other oh yeah fifth graders just like you? Clearly, <laughs> and still am. Yeah, I know. Oh, I know. Mm -hmm. um, other than you've been married for like 50 years. <laughs> Yeah. How many years That's have exactly we been married? Right. We've been married 50 years. I know, which is odd because you're uh, 60. 27. I know, oh, 27 years. I know, your beautiful <laughs> wife, your kids. I was thinking about, though, like you really got big. You were in your late 30s, almost 40. And I was just thinking about, that's a long time to be trying to make it big, to yeah. be a journeyman in this business. Well, I wasn't really trying to make it big. I just want, a journeyman was great for me. Yeah. I was I was happy making a living. That was that was the aspiration, just to make a living at acting. And the, the rest of it was just sort of, uh, sort of gravy, really. What's the best job you ever had? We just had Kevin Ford on. He didn't miss a shift in 27 years, which is so sweet. What's of all your jobs that you've had? The, well, the worst one pops to mind. Oh, I worked in the produce department of a supermarket, oh. and I had to wrap fruit in cellophane. Oh. I don't know why they did it at that point to keep it fresh. I guess <laughs> it was um, the 70s. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You were 11 and three quarters. Yeah, it was. It was. That was a tricky time. Yeah, and the boxes get all soggy there it's in the produce disgusting. department. I know. And I was terrible at it. At one point, I was stocking popcorn on the shelves, and I accidentally poked a hole in the bag. So I took a a one of the labelers to put the price tags on and I sealed up the oh. hole with like 18 prices and then my manager said what's this and he peeled it off and popcorn over the floor clean up aisle five yep <laughs> that's exactly right thank you so much it's good to see you the movie is a delight and Thanks. it's because of you Gru it's your origin story it's all about Gru you're just saying that. no I'm not I love you Gru and I love the minions it's from our parent company NBC Universal and Illumination but we'd be saying this no matter what because it's a fabulous movie and the kids will love it thank you Thanks. A day made better by the great Steve Carell and having the Minions here. So much fun. Be sure and check out Minions, The Rise of Gru. From our parent company, NBC Universal and Elimination, that hits theaters on Friday. Coming up, a 90s throwback with Oscar winner honoring her birthday, the great Kathy Bates. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. It's a can't-miss summer on today. Ah! They are walking strong, elegant, and pretty easy to prepare. How to cut costs on your vacation. Vicki has the answers. Every single thing you need for the best summer yet. Only on today. Ukrainians were defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this?
Welcome back. The talented Kathy Bates, who turns 73 years young today, has played so many terrific roles in her career. And in her honor, we're taking a look back here to 1998 when she spoke with us about her characters in Titanic and Primary Colors. So this has been a great time for you, it's hasn't it? It's been a it? great year. Well, first really of all, is. we should probably Well, this is Griffin. Griffin. This is Griffin. I brought him with me. And he's he's my sweetheart. He's my boy. So yeah, thanks you for letting me bring him. You rescued myself. him a yeah, couple years ago, a couple right? years ago oh, we he's, rescued him. He's very fascinated him. by our interview. You're not allowed to yawn, Griffin. So and I'm brought, I brought him to the to New York for the first time. He's, he's more of an, an L.A. dog, so he's still getting used to the trucks and the traffic and the people and everything. And so. you get to follow him around with a plastic bag. That's right. <laughs> for a little new pink experience. plastic bag on your hand. Oh boy. All right. Well, let's get back to the movies, <laughs> shall we? Yeah. Um, tell me about how excited you were with the Titanic's incredible sweep of the Oscars. It's amazing, isn't it? I mean, so many people worked on the film. It was just an amazing experience. I think the the most incredible experience was working in the dining room, you know, going and being in that scene there and, and sitting down at your place and you'd see a plate that was an exact replica of what they brought up from the debris field and the silver had all the white star insignias stamped right. on it. it Even was just the cards amazing. that had the menus. Amazing. I mean, it was just all so meticulously done, wasn't yeah. it? Was, did that make it eerie in a way? It was eerie. You know, Ken Marshall, who did the illustrated history of the Titanic, came and he just he was there the day we shot the dining room scene, and he just stood there with his mouth open and he said, "This looks, it'll never be done like this." again. He, it was as though he stepped into one of his own paintings. Yeah. Were you surprised that, that Titanic did so well at the Oscars? No. I, I think everybody expected it. You know, it's just, it's, you, you, you go and meet kids who've seen it like eight, ten, eleven times. And I get, I get so many young kids, you know, coming up to me for autographs, but I realize it's not for me. It's because I was on the boat with Leo. <laughs> I mean, let's face it, you what know, their is, eyes just glaze that over. That is so amazing. I guess he's this generation's Davy Jones or whatever, <laughs> whoever was my David Cassidy, I'm not sure. But it's crazy, isn't yeah, it? it? Isn't is. it a bit insane? It is insane. He's such a talented, talented. I, I fell in love with him when he did uh, Gilbert What's eating, Gray. What's eating Gilbert? Was he not magnificent Phenomenal. in that role? And I thought, wow, this I did guy too. is so gifted. He's amazing. He's amazing. He's a real phenom. He's a chameleon. Yeah. You know, and lovely to work with. Really sweet, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. Um, before we talk about primary colors, <laughs> yes. which I think is one of the main reasons we're here, I have to ask you about Molly Brown. How did it happen? You play, of course, the unsinkable Molly Brown in mm -hmm. Titanic. How did it happen, uh, Kathy, that she just just happened to have a, a, a dinner suit that, that fit <laughs> Jack perfectly? You know, that required a little more suspension of disbelief than I was capable of. I know, it's true. <laughs> well, we figured out that maybe, you know, she was shopping in Europe and... And it for was her for her son. son. Right. She was bringing it back for her like, son. I was like, sure. You know, like, Why didn't you well. say change that? Huh? Did you think well, that was a know. little far-fetched? <laughs> it was a little far-fetched. But, you know, it's the movies. So. Yeah, you're right. You're, I guess I shouldn't take it so seriously. Well, let's talk about primary colors because I, I confess to you during the commercial that I haven't seen it yet. I'm really looking forward to seeing it. But from what I hear, you steal the show. Well, it's a great part. It's a plum part. I play Libby Holden, who's one of his um, political operatives, and from the moment I read it, I, I just I knew it was a, a terrific part. It's Why? The best, it's the best part I think I've had to come down the pike in a long time. Better than Misery, or well, it's as good as yeah. I think. What certainly. makes it so good? Well, because you get to do the whole thing. You, it's it's the whole arc. She's crazy. She's funny. She's you know, but she's also she's profound outrageous, and isn't she's she? outrageous. But she's also got a lot of uh, depth, and and she's. Uh, you got the pathos as well as the comedy, you know, and it's 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 everything. It's the whole ball of wax, and and to work with somebody like Mike Nichols, who, you know, is great taste and smart and Elaine he is May's, so smart. Oh, huh? he's just amazing. And not to mention John Travolta, John Travolta. And Emma Thompson, who I adore. Yeah, she's talk about great. smart. I, I mean, know she's so supportive too. We had our first rehearsal. We were sitting next to each other, and there's like a big long aria at the end that Libby has, and. After I did it, she kind of reached over and grabbed my hand and was real supportive and friendly. And it's just great working with everybody. I think the film also has some more profound things to say about the political process. It's not just about a Clinton-esque family. I think mm -hmm. it has to do with how we do elect our leaders and, and how we feel about that whole electoral process and what someone has to give up in order to become 
elected. Right, you know? which is certainly very much in the public discourse these yeah, days. Yeah, it is. Well, Kathy Bates, I'm really happy for all your success. Congratulations Thanks. on everything. Thanks, Katie. Great to see you. He's Griffin gone for was his fascinated nap. <laughs> by everything we had to say. <laughs> anyway, good to see you. Thank you. Very cool. And of course, we are wishing a very happy birthday to Kathy Bates. And there you have today's Pop Star Plus, everybody. Thanks for being here. Hope to see you again tomorrow. Until then, make it a great one today, all day. See you soon, folks. watching today all day and happy first day of July. Yeah, welcome to Today in 30, our half hour wrap up of everything you missed from our show this morning. Kristen Welker and I are happy to be your host while Savannah and Hoda get a jump start on the holiday weekend. And that's where we'll begin the ongoing travel trouble for the holiday, especially for airline passengers. We asked the head of the TSA if there's anything people can do to minimize hassles and delays. His answer straight ahead. Yeah, plus the 4th of July sales are underway. Some of the holiday's biggest ever. We'll let you know where you want to shop and what's for sale and how to find the deepest discounts. Yeah, everyone's looking for those. And today, contributor Alejandro Ramos is here with some summer treats that will impress your guests this weekend at the cookout. Let's get this show started. It's time for Today, today in, in 30. 30. We want to begin with the nearly 50 million people hitting the roads and heading to airports this holiday weekend. That's right. Despite significantly higher gas and airfare costs, travel forecasters say that's near pre-pandemic levels. This is a live look at Interstate 4 in Orlando. AAA estimates 42 million people are driving to their destinations. Today's worst traffic time still a few hours away, so you yeah. have time. And of course, flying has been a major headache for passengers recently. Here's the scene inside busy LaGuardia Airport. I think that's the Marine Terminal there. Uh, this is this morning. We'll keep you updated on what you need to know before taking off. But if there's a silver lining to all of this, it's the weather. There's a look at the beach in Cape May, New Jersey, looking good, where the skies are clear this morning. No major storms expected across the U.S. this weekend. We've got it all covered for you, including Dylan's forecast, and the head of the TSA is joining us live. But first, NBC's Tom Costello starts us off. Tom, good morning. How's it looking out there? Hey, Kristen, welcome back to the USA. You're right, we've got blue skies today. That's really gonna help us out. If you are flying, get there early. We've already got 200 flight cancellations today. That number will build 470 flight cancellations yesterday. But most Americans are driving, paying in some cases $5 and more a gallon for gas. So if you're driving, the worst time to hit the road between noon and nine o'clock. And as we say, it's a bit cliche, but pack your patience. For Americans celebrating the 4th away from home, from the highways to the skyways, the great escape is well underway. And for some families, this Independence Day may also celebrate a freedom of sorts from COVID, with the youngest kids now eligible for vaccines. It's so good! Nearly 48 million people are traveling over this holiday, a record 42 million by car, despite record high gas prices for the 4th of July weekend. Gas prices are insane. But even as drivers pay a national average of $4.84 a gallon for regular, experts say for many families planning to take a trip this summer, going by car may still be the most affordable option. For a vehicle getting an average of 25 miles to the gallon, a round trip from Vegas to the Grand Canyon, just over $120. Charlotte to the Outer Banks, less than $140. Even Kansas City to Denver, a nearly 1,200-mile round trip, just over $200. But factor in meals and hotels, and it all adds up. With kids this age, we'd love to go to Disney World, but getting there and staying there, and it makes more sense to stay close. The flying public is also paying more. For 4th of July weekend, travelers paid an average of about $440, up 45% compared to what they would have paid in 2019. And not just on airfare. The cost to rent a car this year is 70% more than it was the same month in 2019. So already rental car prices are bonkers. 
On Thursday, Delta pilots, in the midst of a labor contract dispute, picketed several airports nationwide, saying they're overworked. As airlines, some of which have already trimmed back summer schedules, face an ongoing pilot shortage. The wild card this weekend and beyond the weather. Thunderstorms from Florida up into the southeastern U.S. All of it creating a rocky travel season over the 4th and through the summer. Every flight we were on was overbooked. It's going to get worse as the weekend comes on, I'm sure. All right, I got to tell you this tip here or this bit of information. As we mentioned, the airlines are cutting their schedules. Today is the day. Delta and American and United all cutting back their schedules effective today. So going forward, the next week or so, two weeks, three weeks, if you got a flight scheduled, check the schedule. Make sure that your flight hasn't been rescheduled, rebooked. You got to stay on top of it. Kristen, back to you. Really important piece of information. Tom Costello, thank you. All right, join us now with more on what you can expect at the airports this weekend. TSA Administrator David Pekoski, he's at a busy Reagan National Airport. Administrator, good morning to you. We can already see those lines forming there just behind you. So let's get right to it. Can the country have faith in the TSA that you have enough workers to keep us safe and keep us going this holiday weekend? Absolutely, without question, every airport in the country, they can have faith that uh, we're going to keep our wait time standards to where they need to be, generally 30 minutes or less for a standard passenger and 10 minutes or less for a pre-check passenger. And you mentioned the um, checkpoint right behind me. Right now, the wait time here at Reagan Airport is about five minutes for pre-check and about 10 minutes for standard lane passengers. Administrator, do you acknowledge, though, that the situation at airports all across the country is just unacceptable? And what did you do to prepare for this weekend? Well, the situation at airports is really busy. I mean, if we look at yesterday, for example, we had 2.44 million passengers go through our screening checkpoints. If you compare that to the pre-pandemic levels in 2019, that's about a 17% increase. So there's a, a very large increase in passenger volume. Uh, we expect that today's going to be busy, of course, uh, and that Sunday will be very busy. Administrator, there's clearly a problem with staffing when it comes to the airlines. And what a lot of travelers face is they get to their airline, they want to check in, the lines are already long. That leads to a domino effect when you get to the TSA lines. Are you in contact with the airlines and have you asked them what can we do to make this process better? We're in contact with the airlines and the airports all the time. In fact, uh, just yesterday, uh, we hold an annual week uh, or a weekly call uh, with the airports across the country, the airlines, uh, and we talk about the projections for the coming weekend. And so we've all kind of level set uh, for this weekend going forward. And then as the weekend proceeds along and, and things might change a little bit, uh, we're in very close contact with them nationally and then at airports around the country. And as we've been reporting, we are expecting travel at pre-pandemic levels. When can people expect this logjam, these flight cancellations to even out, to get back to normal? Well, I think it's, you know, it's, you're right, we're at pre-pandemic levels and generally across the summer, typically, uh, Fourth of July weekend is going to be very busy. The first couple of weeks in August are going to be very busy. Once you get into the middle part of August uh, and then past Labor Day, things get a little bit uh, more calm uh, over the course of the fall and then we pick up again for Thanksgiving. All right, TSA Administrator David Pekoski for us this uh, morning. Uh, Administrator, have a great Fourth of July holiday. Thank you. You do the same. All right, well, another piece of this holiday puzzle, of course, the weather. And for that, we go to Dylan, who's in for Al with the check of the forecast. Dylan, bring us some good news. Well, there is good news today. There's not really a whole lot going on across the country that would impact things negatively, except down along the Gulf Coast. We have these pop-up showers and storms. You can see the moisture streaming in from the south, affecting areas like Houston and southwestern Louisiana. So as you're driving, you're going to run into those heavier downpours. So it'll be, I don't want to say stop and go, but you will run into those pockets where you'll need to slow down on the roads and could cause a little bit of a backup. Then going into Saturday, I think the Northeast is going to be the area we could have some trouble. So if you can travel today, today's the day to do it because we will have uh, I, along I-95, those pop-up showers and storms that could be severe at times, especially later in the afternoon and evening. And of course, you know, whenever there are thunderstorms in the area, we will likely see delays at the major airports in the Northeast. So in orange here, that's the zone we're watching for Saturday afternoon and evening. We could see wind gusts up to 60 miles per hour, downpour 
scores, cloud, uh, the uh, cloud to ground lightning, also hail could be one inch or more in diameter. Then we get to the fireworks by the time we get to Monday night, and it really looks fantastic across all of the Northeast on uh, Monday night, 8 o'clock, clear skies in most of the country besides uh, the upper Midwest should be seeing uh, ideal conditions for those fireworks. Guys, right. we look forward to that. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Dylan. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, Top Story with Tom Hamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Let's go. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Her job, the care and comfort of a cabin full of strangers in the sky. A stewardess in training gets familiar with parts of an aircraft she'll probably never use in service. But in emergency, the drills she learns at school could save the lives of a plane full of panicky passengers. Wow. All right, we are back now with a training <laughs> video from the 1950s, back when flight attendant Betty Nash was just beginning her record-breaking career. Yeah, really incredible video yeah. there. We have been talking a lot about the downsides of air travel lately, so it's nice to have a heartwarming story when it comes to flying. Oh, it sure is. So yeah. Betty certainly fits that bill. She is celebrating a giant milestone recognized by none other than the Guinness Book of World Records as the longest-serving flight attendant in the entire world, 65 years she She's been doing it and get this she's also the oldest flight attendant she is 86 wow. years Ooh. old and of course a lot has changed since she started out but oh one thing gosh. that has stayed consistent is her love and her dedication for the job i love in the th promo they say strangers in the sky yes. yeah. <laughs> well congratulations I, to yeah. her i would just love to hear her tell stories yeah. i love the golden age of flying you know thinking back to the pan am days and all that yeah. sort of stuff well, like just right. how she, cool it used to be she has a lot of stories she says yeah. the most famous person who she was able to fly with was jackie kennedy that's oh, amazing wow. yeah yeah. And yeah she's also a black belt so she's still breaking up fights <laughs> on the yeah. airlines yeah, right. even at, at that age exactly. you can you can catch her up and down the east coast she does that ball Boston, Washington, she's still New York. Yeah, yeah, she's still under. By the way, guys, flights were $12 oh when my. she and started. And you didn't have to make Imagine a reservation. Imagine that. Yeah, pretty incredible. <laughs> and they weren't canceled. No, yeah, not a exactly. Well, as congrats people who her. travel, we know what yeah. a difference oh, tell me about it. she makes. So congratulations. We are back now at 816 with today's Can't Miss Summer, along with the barbecues and the fireworks. There's something else you can enjoy this 4th of July weekend, some of the biggest sales of the holiday we have ever seen. We're talking major discounts on clothing, electronics, items for your home as well. And here to walk us through it all and create a strategy for savings is our friend, Chassie Post. Chassie, good morning. It's Hi, great to see morning. you. good morning. Good to see you. So this is a big year for savings. Why this year? Why should people be looking yes, for great well, savings? this year we're seeing sales that might just rival Black Friday plus sales. They're not just starting today and this weekend. They're happening all through July and consumers rolling out of the pandemic are finding themselves with an excess inventory. So their surplus is our consumers gain. So buy now, save now. We've got some great deals. Get to the store, get online. You stopped me with as big as Black Friday. I know, That's right? impressive. I know, yeah. yes. Well, let's start with electronics. Yes. What are you watching for here? What are the biggest items? So electronics is another area where 
we're seeing lots of surpluses. And you can shop through the 13th of July, mainly thanks to Amazon and their epic Prime Day sales. So we're seeing uh, deals that you can shop now, up to 50% off smart TVs and Amazon devices. Target is also having a big sales event, Target Deal Day. So that runs from the 11th through the 13th. And we're seeing big sales there, up to 30% off. You'll see Apple iPods and Apple Watches. Walmart, they're having rollbacks throughout the month of July, up to 40% off tech. So the clock starts now. Yes. All you right. Can shop now. And what about homeware, electronics, mattresses, yes. bigger deals yes. than yes. before? We're seeing bigger deals from some retailers this year than last. I mean, big highlights are Casper, up to $600 off. Beauty Rest, also bigger deal, uh, deals than last year. All's well, 25% off. That's 5% more than last year. Wow. And we're also seeing big deals on home appliances. So some highlights, Lowe's, up to $750 wow. off. And LG, $700 off a you know French door refrigerator. And these are for big items. Yes, these are for big items. Okay. And of course, a lot of folks getting ready to barbecue oh, this holiday yes. weekend. It's all about the barbecue. It's all about the backyard. So what kind of deals are you looking well, at I'm there? I'm loving this category because the sooner you buy, the sooner you can use now and enjoy all summer long. So we are seeing big savings on grills, patio furniture. So Lowe's up to 20% off grills and 40% off patio furniture. Big sales from Home Depot. Also Wayfair up to 55% off patio furniture. So you can get in on the fun. So it's in stock. You can go to the stores now, get them home before the 4th? Yes, you can. And also look out for great beach things and, uh, you know, inflatables, all sorts of things for summer fun. All right. And what about other clothing? Oh, items? my goodness. So this year we are seeing, you know, sales from companies that have never had sales before. This is my favorite category, yeah, right? By the way. <laughs> so, so you can shop from every category. You're going to see, you know, it's a great time to shop for back to school, back to work. Somersault, a best selling swimsuit brand, they're ha holding their first ever um, online promotion. Reebok, 30% off, you know, items you never see on sale. So Old Navy up to 60% off. I mean, Land's End, 70% off. There is a lot of savings to explore. All right. Well, Chassie Post, thank you so much for starting us off on the great sales and deals this holiday. We appreciate it. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Hamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We are back with our series, Can't Miss Summer, and we are beating the heat with refreshing drinks. So here to help us is a member of our own Today Show family. Yeah, we're so excited about this. Katie Stilo is our culinary producer. She works behind the scenes prepping all of the food segments you see on the air. She also gets us, the talent, ready for all these segments. She's so amazing. This morning, she's making batch cocktails for all of our guests at holiday gatherings. Katie, good morning. Good morning. She's it's a morning. legend. This is a legend right here. <laughs> and Wait, her you, drinks are so good. Quickly, yeah, follow her on Instagram, but also quickly
quickly tell the story. Your name wasn't Stilo until this week. Yeah, so for about the last 28 years, I've been saying Katie Stilo, but it turns out my trip to Italy the last few weeks, I went to my, where my family is from in Italy, it's called Stilo. So this is my oh, official oh, rebrand. So I love it. My okay. name, I am yes. Katie Stilo. So I'm Stilo. <laughs> yes. And We're still amazing. very cool. Um, yes. So Katie, look, I, I have a fear of this too. It's like, you make one cocktail for someone you feel fine. You make a batch for a lot of people. It's like, do I got the recipe right? It can right. be intimidating for yeah. sure. But there's a couple do's and don'ts before we get into making the cocktails. First mm -hmm. things first, don't add ice to your pitcher. Oh. I know it might oh. seem like you want to chill your drink down, but chill your drink in the fridge, and then when you're ready to serve, pour it over ice like these. So we have some cubes okay. over here. We have some pineapple juice that I froze with oh, raspberries. Cool. I have some white cranberry juice with strawberries and some blueberries. This way, when your cocktail melts, it'll add flavor instead of adding water, oh, which is okay. great. Okay, so there's no water in these. Exactly. It's awesome. just um, juices. So the sugar content okay. will freeze. Perfect. Over here, we're talking about practical garnishes and also think seasonal when you're making your cocktails. Okay. If you're not sure what's in season, head to the farmer's mm. market, talk to the farmers, ask them what's around. Yeah, cherries. Good, right? So good. All over Italy. Now as you know, it's the, the summer of Italy. Everyone on mm -hmm. Instagram is there, including yeah. Jacob and myself. So you got to rub that in a little bit. <laughs> spicy too here or what's yeah, going so on? Yeah, so if you want to rim your glass with a little bit of, we have some tahini, we have some chili powder, we have some ground ginger. It has a nice little touch. Mocktail. The right? first one's a mocktail, yeah. Okay. So you can make a bunch of different um, simple syrups for your guests. I have a strawberry basil, a cherry lime, and a warm um, vanilla spice, which is great. Add a little bit of uh, club soda over top, and your guests can make it as sweet or as not sweet as they like. Wow. So it's great for little yeah. kids or non-alcoholic people who would like to drink. It's always good that. to have a mocktail because when you don't want to drink, people aren't asking, what are you drinking? Yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. They don't know. It's exactly. Yeah. Secret. Yeah. Look out for that peer hiding? pressure. <laughs> Look out for that peer pressure, Tom. Are you hiding something? Yeah, I know, right? Do you have the first outside? drink, I'm calling the crowd pleaser because everyone loves a glass of sangria when you go to a barbecue. Oh, so yes. in here I have some stone fruits instead of your typical apples and oranges. I have some apricots, I have some cherries, I have some peaches. Adding a lot of wine. Uh, my, mom, <laughs> my mom, who's watching this at home, will be like, "That's my girl," and that's true. But not just white, right? Not no, only white wine. Oh, and we're going to sweeten white. this with the syrup from Amarena cherries. Oh, yes. Yeah, so it I really bumps that wild. cherry okay. flavor. They're wild cherries that grow in the Bologna region of Italy. Is and that they come easy packed to find syrup. anywhere? You can find them all over New York okay. and all over the world. You can get them on Amazon. It smells amazing. Yeah. And what so was that last step? A little bit of lime juice. The acidity okay. helps cut the syrup. Give this a stir. Let it sit overnight because the fruit is the best part of sangria. Yeah. When you get a little boozy bite, guys, try this. Take a sip. This yeah. is, in there. Is, and these are the cherries if you want to take a this bite. This is so oh. good. You want one? I'm off mock Come on. Uh, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. This is delicious. Drinking on the job. And it's okay. sweet, but not mm. sweet. Yes. Next up, this sense. cocktail is inspired by okay. one of my favorite well, restaurants in New York, Res Dora. Chef okay. Stefano Secchi comes on the show all the time. Mm -hmm. We love him here. Um, I had a cocktail at the restaurant. It's called the Romagna in New York, which plays on the fact that the Lambrusco is from the Romagna region of Italy. Okay. Um, I learned a lot. Okay. Wow. She brought it back. Yeah, she was there two weeks. Back. You yeah. retained it. That's, exactly. That's the good part. Um, so in here, I have some gin. I'm going to add some lemon juice. I'm going to add some lime juice. And this is a, definitely a stronger one. And I like okay. that I'm using a mason jar here because it's a batch cocktail, but you only need a little bit for these cocktails. Okay. So this is great to store in your fridge, which is okay. nice. I'm adding some grappa. Yes, I know oh. that's Ooh, grappa's a like bit a, potent. That, that's strong. Trust me. Like yeah. okay. Is grappa for dessert traditionally? Yeah, it's like an aperitivo. Yeah, uh, helps digest stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you want to call it that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to add a little rose water. brings out the herbal flavor in the gin. And then I made a really strong ginger simple syrup. So you mix this up. Let this sit in the fridge Ooh, for about okay. an hour or two. And then the showstopper portion of this Ooh. is you just top it with a little bit of brown brusco. And oh. it layers over top. Oh. Because Look the base, how beautiful that is. Yeah, it's so beautiful. So, so thank you, Stefano, for the so inspiration. So it's less dense, yeah. so it rises to the Correct. top. What's I the garnish? Like a little candied rose petal from oh uh, Anthony Catrino and my thank wonderful you. assistant, huh? Nam. They made those for me. Oh Real quick, because we're almost out of time. What do we have here? Because this one looks awesome. This one is, Anthony, you want to say it? you drink it? Arancha Rush. I can't really say it that well. But it's a bourbon-based cocktail, so it's oh. my take on the gold rush. Oh, uh, Craig's missing out. I know. Oh, wow. So a little bit of orange juice, a little bit of honey simple syrup, orange honey simple Whoa, syrup. That's delicious. A little bit of orange liqueur, and then a little bit of lime juice to cut it. And you're all set. Pour it over ice and a little bit of candied this is orange so peel. good. Oh Can gosh. I say cheers this to Stilo? Yeah. Yeah. I'll cheers to that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> cheers. And I'm cheers. off to mocktails. This is I'm back the on the This is the prettiest drink I've so ever good. seen. It's too. so right? good. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you much, Katie. For these Thank recipes, you. head to today.com slash food. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to go really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now.
Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. There's nothing like an ice cold cocktail on a hot summer night. And today we are going to take that idea and kick it up a notch. So let's make some summer <laughs> treats. <gasps> today, contributor Alejandra Ramos is turning your favorite boozy beverages into popsicles. She's the host of The Great American Recipe on PBS. Congratulations. Thank you. Alejandra, Thank I you. like this idea. I do too. Super fun. We just got to make sure we keep it away from the kids. Okay, Absolutely. <laughs> let's start with something I have never had, but evidently oh everybody else has, which is well, a dirty Shirley. Yeah. So this is the hottest cocktail. We've talked about it on the show, and I took it up a notch and froze it on a stick. On a Dirty stick. Shirley on a stick. Can so I just say yeah. that I declared <laughs> this to be a summer drink last summer, and my friends Look all made fun of me for ordering one, and now we're making it on the See, stick. See, you got to trust Donna. <laughs> yeah. Trust Donna. So she knows what she's talking about. You put so we're putting some maraschino cherries at the okay. base of this, right, and get them in there. And then a little bit of grenadine. You want to just yeah, divide that in there, too. That adds some fun sweetness and that red deliciousness that we love. Love, adding some lime juice and lemon juice. So we're, we're basically making like our own fresh well. summer soda. Don't worry about it. It's fine. And then that was vodka that I just added, the oh, fun yeah. part. And then this is some seltzer. So you mix that Sweet all up. Sweet seltzer or no? Uh, I just said plain, but you can do a citrus seltzer, okay. whatever you like, but yeah. And then what we're doing here is, yes, I could, you guys should give it a taste. Yes. Pouring it in, mm. and do then you, you to, pop it in the freezer. Do you have to mix it so it stays? No, because it's going to mix really in there. The yeah, what did That's you think? That's good. Right? It's tasty. How does the alcohol freeze? How do you okay, make it so here's the thing. So alcohol doesn't freeze, so it's all about ratios. You want to do about one part alcohol, mm. five parts non-alcohol. Mm. Do not be tempted to add more. I know, so like, good. I want to add more. Oh, it won't freeze. But then it won't freeze. Then you just get like a delicious slushy I cocktail, love. but not a popsicle. Just take a shot on the side, you know? I, I feel like this is for me because I <laughs> yeah. love mango and I love a margarita. This one is for you, Jenna. Thank you. Yes, you know I always try to bring you some tequila. <laughs> yes, So me. We speaking do love of, our tequila. Speaking of which, the tequila goes in the pot with some mangoes. So do ripe mangoes. You could do fresh, you could do frozen, but right now they're in season yeah. and absolutely Beautiful. amazing. And then you add a little bit of water and a little bit of simple syrup. Actually, I think this was simple syrup. This is water. Okay. Uh, but there you go. Pop this in the blender, in. blah, 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 blah. We're not going to do that salt. now. And then here's the fun part. You mix a little bit of salt with some lemon zest, and then you take your pop, and you can dip it Ooh, right I in. I love that. Because so, you need that salt rim, right? Yes. I, I love like, that. Fun. I want to try. Yeah, so that gives you that sort of salty tequila mm. margarita feel. On a stick. Oh, my gosh. I do feel like this is mm. a what salted rim margarita. Really You're delicious. Right? 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 Cheers. I do you feel taste like... the tequila in it? Yes, mm -hmm. you do. Yeah, see, it's oh, like God. a little bit, but it, the flavor really pops. Yeah, I yeah, love that's it. Alrighty. So this is more of a dessert style one. <laughs> yes. I'm actually mostly excited about this one because this is like scream summer to okay. me. So this is a bourbon peach pie Ooh, popsicle. Wow. Basically dessert on a stick. I keep everything's on a stick. Yes. Uh, Super ripe, <laughs> super ripe peaches peeled, or do the canned can or the frozen. Use, like if your peaches, if your kids haven't eaten them and they're going yeah. bad, go ahead and use it. That's actually the perfect time because yes. you want it to be kind of syrupy and sweet. And then this is almost like all those ingredients you would put in it, right? We've got some brown sugar, a little bit of melted butter. Ooh, wow. Yes, that adds such great That's flavor. Some so vanilla, a little bit of salt. We've got our bourbon. Yes, ma'am. Drop that in. A little bit of heavy cream, which adds. <laughs> I know. So this is really like this is one of those pie. light summer diet popsicles. Uh, that's what I'm bringing for you here today, and a little bit of like simple syrup. Without the booze, kids would like this one. Absolutely, and honestly, this because the recipes kind of are very similar. So yeah. make two batches, right? Yeah. Make a batch for the grown-ups, a batch for the kids. Label them yes. well, so you don't have any mix-ups. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's gonna be a wild night. <laughs> 
so you, puree and that and goes in here. Pie crust now on. here's the really fun part. So this is graham crackers with a little bit of sugar, a little bit of butter, and then you just kind of spoon it in yes. right at the top after you add your mix. Ooh. After you frozen it or before? Before you freeze it. So you pour this this batch in. You put in the little crumbles in there, right? Mm -hmm. Just press them in slightly eat that with, a, with a spoon. Absolutely, lady. There you go. <laughs> I I approve. Uh, and then you put your stick in, and so then that is just gonna freeze at the base. See how cute. Oh my gosh. This is. is so cute. Cute. Oh, right? try. Super fun. Mm. I'm still on my tequila. <laughs> really good. <laughs> Okay. Cheers. Really good. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Andra, thank you so thank much. Thank you. You're so creative. Thank mm. you so much. For these recipes, go to day.com slash food. And if you have a summer treat you want us to try, head to hodenjenna.com and hit the connect button to share the recipe. And of course, we hope you all have a wonderful 4th of July. Yeah, that's right. Have a great weekend, everyone. Today, food. It's finally game time, ladies and gentlemen. All morning long, we've been talking about our little burger battle here. We're ready to go head to head. Each of us have assembled what we think is the perfect burger, the perfect topping and side dishes. We're going to drop these off with our judges. They're ready for it. We got chefs Matt Abdu and Alejandro Ramos. They're here ready to roll. So before we hit our food stations, Alejandro, there's mine. We are. All right. We are. All right. Chef, there you go. That's Thank you, mine. Sir. Uh, Chef Savannah, so nice. Craig, you are the best. Yeah. He's so nice. <laughs> Looking <laughs> especially <laughs> adorable. Let's explain to each of these things. I always grew up a lot. All right. Go. Hey, perfect. All right. Give me the tray. Oh, I guess I should take the tray. All of these burgers. Savannah, take oh, yeah. yours off. It's mine. Time's a waste to oh, everybody. Gosh. That's right. Let's report back oh, to our stations. Christmas. Thank you very much. Vote for Savannah. All right. Vote for Savannah. I don't think you're supposed to sway the judges. All right. Chef Matt, what do you look for in a good burger? So my preference in a burger is, first and foremost, you got to start off with really good meat. Whatever that blend might be, brisket, short rib, something that's really good, really fresh, really high quality. Got it. And then the right bun. The bun's got to be the right ratio. It can't be too thick or too dense. It's got to be nice and squishy. A little sweetness to it. That's my Alejandro, how about you? ideal. More just, basic or a little more bold? I just want bacon yep. on it. You uh -oh. think you're going to get that. I want some avocado on it. Okay. Uh oh, I see I where this is yeah, going. You know, I mean, I love bacon. Yeah. That, right. And I love good sides. I need great oh, sides. Good okay. Side. Okay. Right. Let's right. go. Savannah, let's okay, start with so, you. Okay, so guys, I mean, it's simple, but it's a classic. It's the bacon cheeseburger. And what I like to do is put my delicious patty <laughs> right on the bun. I put some great cheese. You could do what this kind of good cheese? old American okay. cheese right here. But I like a good white American cheese, but I didn't specify. Bacon can't go wrong, guys, OK? okay. Then get some avocado. Can I give you a little pro tip? Salt your avocado. That's okay? a good oh. idea. You have a little salt on there to really nail it. Now here, this is a delicious burger. But you may be asking yourself, self, why does she have two sides? And I'll tell you why. Because you take these no, burritos. No, no. Oh, yes, you do. No. Oh, oh, oh. Sweeping the nation. That's bold. That'll right be now. Do that. This is delicious. Now, did you that's, have that's that a move right there. Right there. Right. Guys, the move. what do you think? See. That's a gamble that could have paid off right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like that's a DIY situation. Uh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think mm. it feels a little bit like a desperate oh, last no. minute. <laughs> right. no. I'm digging it. Wow. Right, they like it. All right, they Carson. Like so, Savannah, you're doing well. Take your burger. I, the, much like myself, it's a simple burger. Okay. I'm a simple guy. It's a simple burger. Patty, brioche bun, though. Lettuce, tomato. Oh, brioche. Oh, brioche. Yeah, I so love simple. the brioche. Brioche. Um, and your cheese is fancy. Pepper jack. Yeah. I like a oh, little bit. It's simple nice. now. I like a little. No, it's still simple. A little bacon. Yeah. Always have oh, to add yeah, bacon. A little, little bacon there. I like to I like to crust my bacon like that so you get a little bacon oh. bite. Yeah. A little lettuce, 
a little tomato, a little ketchup. Here's the thing, though. I think that the side is just as important as the burger. So, mm -hmm. hand-cut fries, a little Cajun seasoning. I like that. Oh, Ever been small. to Bojangles? Ever yeah. been to Bojangles? Oh, of course. Best fries in the world. This morning. So, I, I tried to, I tried to <laughs> replicate the recipe. So, Cajun seasoning like on that. the fries. Old base simple base burger. Fries. Boom. There you have it. Not fancy. But I like Judges, to think it's think? tasty. I, I think it's delicious. I love that I, little heat of that pepper jack in there. I, I do, mm. and I gotta say, I respect your philosophy about sides because I feel the same way. And these are epic. All right, Jenna. Okay, well, okay. do we have any Texans in the house? Yeah, oh, 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 get the crowd in. I'm making a special Texas burger that we used to make back in the day. Uh, my mom made it with green chilies, actually. But first, I start with queso, which is wow. Texas word Woo! for delicious. <laughs> <laughs> queso here, and I actually like to put it on both sides of the bun. Jenna wow. likes queso on everything. Yeah, I mean, I think, who doesn't like queso on everything? Yeah. Woo! There were some people that said they did. And now guacamole. <laughs> you may think this is too much. I don't know. This could, this could seal <laughs> the deal. Guacamole on the top of your burger. Okay. Uh, then, my uh, guacamole always has just a little bit of red onion and okay. then tomato. And then if you like spice, now if you uh, don't. Bring it, okay? bring it lady, bring All it. Right. Like Alejandra likes the spice. <laughs> you put a couple of jalapenos, mm. right? Oh. All right, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Woo! It up. Now, I serve it always with some guac and tortilla That's chips. That's nice side. Very Texas, yeah. very Jenna. What Matt, do you think? Matt, what do you think? Got it. You're speaking my language, lady. Queso on anything. You can never go wrong. Right? Yeah. God bless. Dip, Dip a uh, carrot Alejandra, is the, does the burger and the queso, does that work together? Oh, it's magic because, like, it it's just keeps it really moist. It adds a like, delicious magic. sauce. I mean, it's saucy, messy. Okay. Well, I'll end it. <laughs> I, I know that these gastro pubs got really popular with all these niche burgers where they put all this weird stuff on it. I'm hearkening back to a much simpler time oh, in our please. country. Uh, oh. I'm harking back to where a good old-fashioned American Budweiser is going to be my side. <laughs> some ketchup's going down. Some American <laughs> cheese. This is the American BLT burger. Your simple bacon, lettuce, and tomato. We'll put it up right here on top. My side's going to be a pickle. Got some avocado on the side if you want to do that. And the cold beer. <laughs> Guys, all-American burger. Yeah. I like your side. What do you think? You never go wrong with that. I also have to say... A good pickle Love as it. an oh. accoutrement to any burger is always a great little side component. Yeah, I think the pickle makes it, but um, I'm, I seem to be missing the side of beer. Yeah, well, <laughs> it was a long time. Yeah, what happened there? I don't know you what know happened. What? There, Only Craig, Craig intercepted it. <laughs> there you go, Alejandro. There you go. There's Thank you. Thank bribes. You, sir. bribes are Cheers. coming. Cheers. All right. Well, so we've heard from the judges. Wait, did they did they vote? Well, I'm just giving them minutes for their palates. Let me just tell everybody at home. You guys are going to be asked. So deliberate now, and for you at home, we want to know what you think after watching who's the burger stuff. You can vote. Vote for your favorite at today.com slash food. We're going to go ahead and reveal the results tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow? tomorrow? For, yeah, we're going to give all the viewers a, a, a night here to really think about it. some more time to lobby Texans. If they want to make these things tonight. Texans, I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have the online vote tomorrow, but for now we turn back to the chefs. Yeah, Alejandra, okay. Matt, do you have a clear winner? But we don't want to skew the online Results. Go ahead Don't and worry about it. It's okay. But we do seem to have a favorite amongst the two of us. All right. I'm dying I, to you say know, it. Jenna, I, I got to love the Texas Jenna, Forever Burger. Texas oh, Forever. my God. Oh. Jenna, oh. Thank you, everybody. Wins the first ever burger battle. We'll this never hear the end of this. Be a good sport. Oh, you deserve it. Thank you. You deserve it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what what you say so? Every time. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. I want my beer back. Well, hey, we're going to be offering as a special All right. Thank you to our judges. I mean, that was just great. And at home, go to the site and Thank vote. You God, you guys still have a chance. I'd rather have the popular people vote. Me too. I want the popular vote, too. All right. Well, first, we're back in a moment. This is today on NBC. Happy grilling. Congratulations. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Uvalde, Texas, a small town that has become yet another landmark. How long do you think it took for all this damage to occur? Can you tell us what, what it was like? With our NBC News exclusive. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now.
Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. All right, there's nothing like biting into a juicy burger, and today we've got one that is, we never cooked this on our show. It's Ever. Totally Which I'm so different. surprised. But by the way, which is saying an awful lot, we yeah. cooked everything a couple of times. <laughs> Chef Ronnie was a celebrity judge on the Netflix show. Is it cake? He's got a lighter take on a summer classic. It's first of all, we missed you. It's so I nice. I miss you How guys. Is show? So is it fun to watch with kids? It, is it cake? It's kid friendly. It's, it's perfect. It's such a fun show. It's so it? fun. You guys will love it. Okay. I think your kids will love it. What's the premise? We taste it's, something and you, It's basically like a cake this. that looks like a real thing. I think Remember Mikey Day was, on, Mikey did was on this show. Remember, you cut into you it cut and into you see it. if it's a real cake or an object. Ooh, I yeah, love cool. that. Yeah. All right, let's talk about this unique burger recipe. What All right. is it? We're making a shrimp. Jenna goes straight for the knife. I don't know why. All right. It's an instinct. All right, just chop. Keep those fingers tucked in. So we're making a shrimp Shrimp burger. We have some butter here and we're going to add some scallions. We're just going to cook that up. What it does is soften up the flavor and gives it a really complex flavor. And what is this going to be used browns. for? This is going to be used for the shrimp mix. Okay. okay. So, it, so you could do, could you do like an onion or you prefer scallions? I prefer scallions because I think they're easier. They cook faster and they're kind of yeah. really, really tender and subtle. Why have we never heard of a shrimp burger? Is it us? Or? I don't know. No, it might just I've be you guys. It's not super popular, but yeah. I feel like I want to make it really popular. Okay. Right? Yeah. Right. okay. So we fast. have our shrimp. It's deveined and cut. Um, it's in its raw. Three yeah, deveined raw. it. Yeah, deep in it. We're gonna have some cheddar cheese in there. Wow. Panko breadcrumbs. This is gonna really help make it a little bit more tender. Okay. A little bit of Louisiana. Louisiana. I'm like Tom. Louisiana, Louisiana hot sauce. You can't beat it, baby. <laughs> That's for Hoda. And then a little bit of egg as well. Okay. Oh, so the egg is gonna it. bind it. Yeah. yeah. In that case, let's just add a little bit more. Okay. Then we have some fresh garlic. Mm -hmm. And then we have some smoked paprika. A little bit of salt. And then some ground black pepper. Yeah, that's we your patty mix. mix. This that's... is our patty mix, yeah. And this is actually inspired by a trip that me and my family uh, take to the San Juans. We go mm -hmm. shrimping. And this is what we make with we our shrimp. shrimping. We go shrimping, that yeah, cool. off the dock. Yeah. You are cool. I know, I'm very cool, guys. <laughs> no, not <laughs> at all. It's actually the really good. Yes, yeah, so then you add these scallions. You have the, the, the butter. butter. So it's like really mm. flavorful and really yummy. And then you just mix it so up. So it does stay together like a burger just because of what you put in there? Exactly, the egg and the breadcrumbs. Okay. So what it's going to do is soften a little bit. You want to divide it into four if you're making normal size burgers. Yeah. And if you're making sliders, just use an ice cream scoop, Ooh, scoop it I up. I like the idea of okay. sliders. Yeah. I love a slider. Yeah, what these are good. Mayonnaise? You're going to want a whole one, though, Jenna, trust me. Okay. Okay, so then I mean, we have a little bit more hot sauce. Well, this is a spicy mayo, very easy. Some regular mayo, some hot sauce, some lemon juice for a little bit of brightness. We have garlic powder. You know what's powder. what I've just realized in my 40s? Mm. That I actually love a mayonnaise-based sauce, but I yeah. don't like mayonnaise. Weird. Like mayonnaise plain? Why no. is that? I love mayonnaise. I put it on everything. It's a childhood that issue. But, I, but like this, I want to eat. Okay, I don't know. well, here you go. It's okay. like ice cream. You just want to put like a whole. So then what you want to do is you add a little bit of cooking oil. We're going to add some raw shrimp patties. And when you do it, they are pretty tender. You want to be pretty gentle with them. But once they cook up, they're going to stay together. No, she did a great job. Yeah, Thank you, Jenna. Perfect. You must be a pro so how, long do you, to a, how long do you cook? Two to three minutes on each side until That's it's nice and brown and crispy. It you cooks know how so quick. fast. You know how yeah, quick shrimp Yeah, and cooks. you don't have to worry about being slightly raw or undercooked because it's just shrimp. Okay. You know, if you use fresh eggs, it's also safe. What you Wait, want to this, do? Let's talk about the bun. This oh, is the, not bun. the bun is important. Bun. No, so you need. Yeah, we were just talking about this earlier. You need a front, like a, a brioche bun. Uh -huh. You want it to be nice and soft because you don't want that meat squeezing out of the bun when you yeah. when you bite into it, right? So you add a little bit of sauce or a lot because I love mayo. I love mm -hmm. mayo so much. Then we add some of that patty. Is that too much mayo? <laughs> you didn't add that much on this ours. This is literally how much mayo I love to eat because mm. I will dip it in the mayo as I'm putting it in. Mm. Iceberg lettuce, and then whoops. Ronnie, how is it's that? Got a, it's got Let's a bite. Like, cheers to that. Oh my God, cheers. cheers. It's delicious. It's the first it and good? best shrimp burger I've ever had. Oh my God. <laughs> well, don't have any more after this because you we know them is better. There's nowhere to go. Okay, to get this recipe, head today.com slash food. And welcome back this morning. We are rounding out restaurant week on today with famed celebrity chef, restaurateur, television host, and all around great guy. Of course, he also happens to be the mayor of Flavortown. The mayor of Flavortown. That's right. 
Uh, he is up early for us in Santa Rosa, California, alongside his son, the deputy mayor of Flavortown, uh, Hunter Fieri, also there. Good to see you both. Thanks so much. for. Hey, God, before we start cooking, I, I think folks should know, last year you raised, I believe, about $21 million dollars uh, for for employees of the restaurant industry, the Restaurant Employee Relief Fund last year. First of all, kudos to you. But secondly, do you think we're at a point where some restaurants are starting to get back on their feet? Well, I, one, thank you for recognizing that. And there were so many great people that were involved in raising that money. We got almost to $25 million. Uh, the money kept wow. trickling in there at the end. But the National Restaurant Association was amazing in, in helping that happen. Uh, we gave out 43,000 grants, by the way, Al. But I'll tell you, um, yeah, the restaurant business is, we're coming back. We're coming back a little bit different. You know, people are learning a lot more about to-go, a lot more about delivery. Um, they're learning to, uh, you know, they're kind of learning how their restaurants are able to work. The, the dining in is, is still a really difficult part. And dining out can't happen all over the country, especially because of weather. But uh, restaurants are coming back. We're resilient. I mean, this, yeah. is, this is what we do in this industry. Hmm. Your new season of Tournament of Champions helps local restaurants. Can you tell us about the impact of that? Well, okay, so Tournament of Champions, in, I, listen, I've done so many different types of shows on the Food Network, and this is really one of my favorites. I designed this about three or four years ago with my buddy Brian Lando, and you know what we said is we want to make a competition that can never be duplicated. Mm -hmm. This randomizer that you see spinning right there, that gives a different protein, a different vegetable, uh, a different piece of equipment, different style of food, and different time for each competition. And these chefs are really put under the, I mean, they're put under the gun. I, I've never seen anything this hard. I mean, and, and I thank Iron Chef and all the competitions that have happened before this. Uh, but this one right here really puts them to the test. And uh, the new season starts this Sunday on, on the 7th. And wait till you see the chefs and wait till you see what they do. Blow your mind. All right, let's get to this burger. I see you're about to flip it. What is, what, is, what is Hunter making over there? What is he stirring up? Well, Hunter's over here working on uh, making a lot of something. Uh, Hunter's, making, Hunter's making the famous donkey sauce. And we use this by the gallon, of course. No, I don't know why we're making this much. But it's got roasted garlic. It's got a little bit of Worcestershire, mustard, a little salt, a little pepper, a um, little mayonnaise, of course. And this mm, really is – this is our signature burger that we do at Flavortown Kitchen. We do at all the Guy Fieri restaurants. And, of course, we love to make for you guys at 5 a.m. in California. Um, <laughs> but you're, you're, adding mac, you're adding mac and cheese to this guy? So, the ma so we've got some macaroni that's done here going into the cheese sauce that we made. We call it Super, Super Melted Cheese, mm. SMC. Okay, so we'll take this mac and cheese into that. Hunter will go ahead and bring me a couple pieces oh, of so uh, cheddar more, cheese. Yeah. It's more okay. cheese than mac, right, Mr. Mayor? Well, what we like to do is, is really accentuate wow. the cheese side of things, yeah. okay? We'll throw the uh, dome on top of that, a little water. You want to hit me with a bun, Hunter? Wow. I don't know if you can see us. Dude, these are special yeah. effects, oh. by the way, you guys. This is really us at it's home. Oh, I thought he was going to actually hit you with a bun. No, he oh, would. Trust me. That. Don't, don't, don't start. Out. He'll get into this. He, <laughs> I made him get up early. He wasn't super thrilled about that idea. <laughs> All right. So we get a little bit of that. Hunter's toasting the bun. He'll hit it with a little of the uh, donkey sauce. But yeah, so Tournament of Champions is happening. And I'll tell you, we're coming back. We've been shooting a lot of guys' grocery games, what we call guys' grocery games delivery that we shoot here in this kitchen at our house. And we've also been doing a lot of, uh, of Triple D takeout. So we couldn't go to, a, to our favorite Triple D restaurant because everybody was closed. But the restaurants are still operating with their delivery and their to-go. So we said, hey, why not send us some of those new dishes that you guys are doing, and we'll highlight them. So we started mm -hmm. to highlight these. Uh, Hunter, I think we shot probably 30 shows during oh, the pandemic. Yeah. And that was awesome. Kept the, the TV crew working, That's kept awesome. the restaurants going, and hopefully kept people in I'm worried day. about the burger. Is it going to burn? No. no. Oh, no. Master Does that look burnt? Get in here take no. a shot of that burger. That it's is real good. Can mm. you do that on a grill, right guy? On point. That is impressive. This is on a plancha, so just basically like a flat cast iron skillet. Hunter's got pickles, tomatoes, and onions down right here. Don't and like I said, this is the signature burger that we do mm. at all the Guy Fieri restaurants. We'll hit a couple pieces of bacon pick, pick your, uh, on yeah. top of that. Hunter will hit a wow. little bit of lettuce. So on good. top of that, let's get some oh, so onion good. straws. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> a little touch of vinegar. 
If you were in the studio right now, I would take a bite of that giant burger and embarrass myself on national television. Hey, I'm going to send you this burger. That's what you need to be thinking about. I look at that. I pay a hundred bucks to see you take a bite of that. Box. That's a beautiful burger. Looks so good. Guy, honestly, almost 25 million. You've done so much for your own industry. So, I mean, Craig said it. God bless you for that. Hunter, go back to bed. I mean, don't even. (laughs) No, no. You can't say goodbye to Hunter. Why? You. Take a Tell bite. me where you want me to send this. <laughs> I, want, I want to take a bite. Okay, so you take a bite, guy. <laughs> all right, all right. Somebody just said that they were going to give thousands of dollars to, to the program if we, if we oh, take a bite. That? So Hunter's back on the fourth. You know this is breaking. Oh, this is breaking the breakfast uh, champion routine. There you go. This is all for you, Al. All right. I know Yum. you appreciate this. Here we go. This. Oh, looks good. Yeah, watch the technique. We're living through you, right? There we go. Yeah. Love it. That's how we're there back. And for the recipe there, you can check it out. Head to today.com slash food. Thank you, boys. We'll see you in a couple hours. Thanks, guys. Welcome back to you today. We've got a lot to celebrate on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. It's a can't-miss summer on today. They are walking strong, elegant, and pretty easy to prepare. How to cut costs on your vacation. Vicky has the answers. Every single thing you need for the best summer yet. Only on today. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. If you want to start eating healthier in 2020, we have got just the recipe for you to try this weekend. It's a guacamole crunch burger with a kicked up mango Oh, salsa. I like it. And here to show us how it's done is vegan <laughs> chef Chloe Coscarelli. Chloe, Chloe. Hey, hi. We love when you come because sometimes when we have a vegan chef, we don't know if we're going to love the food. We always love your food. Yay. Absolutely. All right. Well, if you want to eat more vegetables, mm-hmm. but you don't feel like salad. Yeah. Yes. We're going to make burgers, sliders, and meatloaf all Ooh, vegan. Wow. So we're going to start or with our patty. We're making smoke. it from scratch. All right. So here we have an onion. We are going to caramelize it. Al, if you want to throw our onions okay. right in the pan. Okay. And is this just a regular olive oil in here? It's a little bit of olive oil, and we're going to slow cook it for about mm-hmm. 20 minutes until oh. it gets sweet and oh, juicy and caramelized. Oh. Yeah. Look what happened. Ooh. Because in a normal beef burger, you have a lot of animal fat. Sure. So we want that moisture and that juiciness from our caramelized mm-hmm. onions. Okay. Let's move over here. We are going to add our caramelized onions to black beans. Mm-hmm. If you want to go ahead and add all of these in. So is sweet potato? Roasted sweet potato. Okay. Roasted sweet brown potato. Brown rice. Some breadcrumbs, which you could use gluten-free if you would like. Is the brown rice cooked or? It's cooked short grain brown rice. And cooked, that's going to okay. bind our veggie burger together because we're not using any eggs or cheese. Mm-hmm. Okay. Some salt, a little sriracha for a kick of spice. Now, are those beans cooked? Did you cook those? The or? black beans are it's actually one can of black well, beans. So it's fine. super okay. easy, okay. economical. You're going to mix it together. Mm-hmm. If someone wants to put gloves on, we can mix it actually with our hands. What? That'll, I want broker. <laughs> this is a great way involved. to get your kids involved. Everyone can form their own patty. <laughs> And I love sweet. Maybe they should have been the large. <laughs> we can use a spoon. Um, yeah, you don't have to use your hands or if you don't want Three to. Three hours later. <laughs> All right. So these are the patties that. <laughs> 
We got it. Yeah, just okay. <laughs> I'm gonna scoot over okay. here. We're gonna throw. I'm so sorry. We're gonna throw our patties on a nice sizzling oh, olive oil. Sizzle. Getting that char is mm. really gonna help you with that meaty okay. flavor. A little bit of crispy. About three minutes on each That's side. Good. Let's okay. talk about some guacamole. Yeah. Oh, yes. If you want to make this, you what, can you use a fork. You want some gloves? To, <laughs> ma <laughs> to mash the avocado. Super simple. A little lime juice, and lime. we're just gonna give it a little bit of salt. That's it. If you want to use store-bought guacamole, that's mm -hmm. a great time. Time no saver. Judging. Okay, so mush, 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 mush. All right, mush. let's add over. We are uh, making a oh, mango salsa. This will make it like fresh and sweet. Do you have top. a tip for how to peel a mango? I it's just do. Mango. Watch this. So we this are going to score it. Look, watch. You can also buy diced mango if you do, do not want to deal. Oh, you do? Yes, watch. Amazing. One, two, three, pop. Oh, and then you the pop. just shave it off, yeah. and we are going to mix Isn't that it good? I love that. Yeah. with some jalapeno, oh. lime juice, and a little agave for extra oh, your, sweetness. So this is the mango Go salsa. Go ahead and mix toss that it together. Up. Okay. Al, come on over here. Yeah. Let's okay. build a burger. Build a burger. Build a burger. All right. You can go crazy however you like it. Okay. Use the toppings you like. We have some crispy tortilla strips to mm -hmm. put on top, some avocado, the mango salsa will give it a little top. bit of spice. Okay. And no one's gonna miss the meat with these. That's fantastic. Yeah, there's so many components. I think sometimes veggie burgers get a bad rap if they're kind of simple mm. yeah. or bland. But I like to pack in lots of flavor, and these are really easy to make. Wow. You can also make the patties ahead of time, keep mm -hmm. them in your freezer, oh. and just I wanna try cook them off. Yeah, please. Okay, then yeah. Yeah. sliders. Tell me what you guys think. Now, we also have some pesto parmesan sliders. Mm -hmm. The pesto parm. Made with pesto, cashew, mozzarella, mm. oh. and then we have a holiday cashew nut roast. So it's mm. like a meatloaf but with no meat and a wow, country gravy that's on fantastic. top. Fantastic. Really great. That's really good. Chloe, Chloe. Thank you so mm. much. Thank you guys. Happy New Year. Delicious. <laughs> to get these recipes mm. go to today.com yes. slash food. All right. Welcome back to you today. We've got a lot to celebrate on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good and that's it. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. It's a can't-miss summer on today. Bam! They are walking strong, elegant, and pretty easy to prepare. How to cut costs on your vacation? Vicky has the answers. Every single thing you need for the best summer yet. Only on today. Uvalde, Texas, a small town that has become yet another landmark. How long do you think it took for all this damage to occur? Tell us what, what it was like. With our NBC News exclusive. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. What's better than biting into a big, two-handed, juicy burger? Okay, How about yeah. washing it down with a chocolate peanut butter milkshake? Yes. Uh -oh. You know it's going to be good because Sunny Anderson is here. She's uh -oh. the co-host of the Food Network's The Kitchen and just one of our favorites. I, I just like to eat, and I'm glad that you guys like to have me on so I can eat and cook. What's up, Maria? It smells so good. I you ready for this? I'm ready. I'm going to make some burgers. She knows a burger. I yeah, know well, a burger. California, I, like a burger. I mean, yeah. how many burger places are there? You yes. know what I mean? She, so I'm going to show you how to make, like, a classic burger. Okay, so okay. what do we have? Yeah, we've got some burgers. good old chuck. That's 20% fat, 80% meat. We've got the iceberg. We've got the tomato that's beefsteak. Everything is super mm. typical Americana. Mm -hmm. We've got the ketchup, the mayo to mm -hmm. mix together with the relish to make that fabulous sauce. That's what I'm going to do right now. Okay. Just uh, get them onto the grill. Now, listen. Smells good. When people make burgers, usually the people that are like aficionados, it's just salt and pepper. Right? I would like for you to yeah. upgrade with one more ingredient this 4th of July. What? Yes, ma'am. 
Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire yes. sauce. So check the recipe. It's at uh, today's show on the website. Now this is going to go this on the bottom good. bun. What I like to do with the Worcestershire sauce with the salt and pepper is like a really nice dry marinade. So I'll mix it into the chuck. I always do about a, te a teaspoon <laughs> of salt per pound of meat. And then from there, I just oh. add in the Worcestershire, let it sit as a patty, but your and then put it together. Sauce looks pretty good. You know, I stole this. Um, it's a million. It's like a million island sauce. Yes. Have you ever heard of that before? I sure have. <laughs> You're gonna put the burger on that. Yeah, burger right on that. that. I figured that out you all by myself. Maria, it wasn't even in the cue card. What's your favorite burger type to just have? Plain, I actually just like a plain burger. Yeah. I like onions. Sometimes. Do you like, do you like, like it with, with cheese? Like a little bit of no, cheese? No, I don't really like oh, well, that much. Too bad. But everybody else does. Yeah. Maria, that's okay, because, okay. you know, you're fitting into them jeans. You yeah, know that's saying? Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. You know what, Jenny? You know who's this not fitting good. into the jean and going to take a bite of yeah. cheeseburger? Let me know what you Look think. All right, so that's that. the classic. I've also got my Tex-Mex burger here, and all the mm. recipes for my burger bar are online, so you can get all Woo. kinds of different toppings and flavors for your burgers today. Let's move on to fries. All right, so There's fries. that girl that takes the bite. Are you going to do it? No, I'm not going to do it. I just was that girl and it felt really good. Oh, it was beautiful. I'm gonna be oh, that girl okay. in about two minutes. Okay. Yep. All right, so fries, right? We got the burger, you need the fries. Who's doing the double fry method in the summertime? It's way too hot. Just put yeah. these freezer joints into the uh, actual oven. Now, freezer a trick, joints. if you're going to bake them and not fry them, right. a little bit of Pan? cooking spray, yeah. yeah. put it in the bag, and then just kind of shake it around. That's gonna allow it to crisp up a lot better. Now, oh. your face says, I don't want crisp fries. Well, and that's okay. Oh. Extra <laughs> Do you know what my I face like says? This is what's gonna make and any this. kind of fry. It could be soft that? potatoes, it could be crispy potatoes. It's a mixture of just garlic, <laughs> parsley, and some Parmesan cheese. Oh. You chop it all together on the board. Those are kissing fries. So it really kind of comes together. You're gonna kiss somebody Hit with those fries. Just a little bit of salt, right. lots of pepper. You know, you may gotta have a little She's bit of garlic the in them She's too. Eating over there. You yeah. Pay attention. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to get it into the fries fresh out of the oven oh. so that cheese kind of just starts to stick to it. Toss oh it God. and you're Look good to go. That. You know what else? Yeah. Goes with fries. My chocolate yeah. peanut butter shake Your with jelly. Your chocolate peanut butter shake with yeah. a little jelly. Yeah, I'm we'll just trying to. straws for 4th of July. Yeah. So you're mm. going to take chocolate ice cream, some peanut butter, blitz it together, add in a little bit of uh, <sighs> strawberry jelly or I'm any dead. kind of jam. I mean, you have to taste this. OMG. Yeah. America! Get pregnant and eat. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> to get these oh my god, this is good. Go to yeah. oh my god. Slash oh my god. Food. Good morning. Red, white, and blue mounting trouble at the airports to begin the long July 4th weekend. Tens of thousands of passengers caught in the chaos of new cancellations and staffing shortages. We'll try to make the best of it. Millions opting to drive instead. It makes more sense to stay closed. What can you expect and is any relief in sight? We'll go 